no place like home. Dorothy said it best. The great state of Kansas. Getting ready for the Sunflower Showdown. Today, chilly temps, but that's okay. It's Saturday, and we've got a rivalry game. It's Kansas and Kansas State. So glad you could join us. Big 12 football coming your way. My name is Eric Collins. My partner is Ben Lieber. This is an age-old rivalry, but folks, we've got some young blood coursing through it. For Kansas State, 23th team in the country, deuces are wild. They've got a true freshman that they are in love with in Deuce Vaughn. Deuce Vaughn is electric. He leads his team in both rushing yards and receiving yards. He's only five foot five. He's small, but he's mighty. And let me tell you, let me show you one example against Oklahoma, which is just what I'm talking about when it comes to his explosive running style. There he is dotting the eye. Watch that left foot plant in the ground. That's so quick. He saw that right away. He plants that left foot in the ground. And then watch how he hugs the offensive lineman, creates a tight, close lane. And he sees this little gap that he can kind of slide through. That's all he needs to break an arm tackle, keep his feet, show off that speed, and get in the end zone. And guess what? I mentioned that he's also the team's leader in receiving yards. He's a mismatch nightmare for all linebackers. Look at that. Five yards of separation off that quick move, the outside to inside move. And again, look at the balance. Look at the lower leg strength. But it's not going to be all about him. Will Howard, second start as a freshman as a quarterback. He's going to have to make some plays as well. Got to keep this defense honest. Yeah, Will Howard, a uh, young player, but a very bright future. All right, let's switch gears now. Let's talk a little bit about the Kansas Jayhawks. It has been a whirlwind already. They have played four games. They've had three different starting quarterbacks and this week, well, Puka Williams, their best offensive player, he opted out for the rest of the season. But that being said, still optimism in Lawrence because of a young and aggressive defense. Yeah, they're going to have to find a new identity starting today on offense for everything that you mentioned. But it's this defense that I'm excited about. They're young and hungry up front. Experience in the second level and and their secondary is long and athletic, and they make a lot of plays. Check out the last game against West Virginia. Ten breakups, nine for loss, and two takeaways. All right, let's do it. It is the 110th consecutive meeting between these two schools. We have got Kansas. We have got Kansas State. Our kickoff is next. Welcome back, everyone. Football here, Manhattan, Kansas. FS1 College Football sponsored by Rocket Mortgage. Happy Saturday afternoon. Getting ready for a rivalry game, the Sunflower Showdown. And there is some history involved with these two schools. First meeting way back in 1902. They didn't play in 1910. There were some concerns about eligibility, and both schools were like, ah, I'm not playing. So since 1911, they have played uninterrupted. This is the 110th consecutive meeting. And somehow, Kansas still leads the all-time series, even though K-State has won 11 in a row. Good to see him back. Les Miles back on the sideline. Did travel to Morgantown, West Virginia a week ago. Tested positive for COVID-19. He is back in the mix. College football needs him here. This is a good thing. Well, college football needs him here, and the team needs him here. And he sounded great on the phone when we talked to him the other day. He'll be uh, matching wits with Chris Kleiman. Chris Kleiman doing good things. The second season in Manhattan, 11-6. and six. And after a uh, speed bump, First weekend of the year, losing against Arkansas State. He has rattled up three consecutive conference wins. Coin toss won by Kansas State. They defer. And so it will be Kansas starting on offense after a touchback. Now Kansas, we've told you about that quarterback situation. It has been a carousel already. Three different starters in four games. And we look into that huddle, and it looks like we're going to have Jalen Daniels getting the start. Uh, the 17-year-old wearing his H on his jersey, and he is making his second career start. Jalen Daniels, a bit of a surprise. It's a bit of a surprise. You know, we talked to the coaches about it. Of course, they kept a pretty tight lip about what was going on in the quarterback room. But, you know, we did ask about all three quarterbacks, and they do love Jalen's upside. He's got a really live arm, can get the ball down the field. I expect some deep shots in this game. And we're underway. The first play is an inside run, standard issue. 
And a gain of about three on first down. Very conservative on the play call. What are some positives about Jalen Daniels that makes you think that he's got a chance to be the future as such a young player? Well, he's already got a good understanding of the offense. That's key number one. So mentally, he's in it. And they say he's got this natural leadership. The guys really rally behind him, and that's important for a quarterback to elevate the play of people around him. A play action. And pass is too high. Is it picked off? Quite possibly it is. Yes, it is. Ross Elder has it. And it's a turnover. K-State football. Well, that looks like right now just an overthrow by Jalen Daniels trying to hit the guy right down the seam, and it's an overthrow, and Elder's just sitting in his post, just right in his spot. All he's doing is playing landmark football, and it looks like he comes up with the interception. I'm not so sure. Look that that ball may have hit the turf. So you're telling me we got two plays into this college football season for you and I, and we're already going to have, gonna have a review. Well, we shall see. To me, it looked like he, that ball may have hit the turf. But the... Uh, Early on the field is an interception by Kansas State. The previous play is under further review. Ooh, you might be right there, DC. Eagle eyes, Collins, huh? Well, we shall see. The ruling on the field, of course, was a interception, so that will need to be overturned. Is there conclusive evidence to overturn that? Not quite sure about that. Well, we're not quite sure, but you do see the ball hit the ground. And it would be one thing if he had some sort of control and the ball touches the ground, but it looks like to me the ball is helping him secure possession of this football. As you see the overthrow to Kwame Lasseter, the second. Oh, ben and I are not alone. Uh, Mike Pereira is uh, with us as always, and uh, he has his eyes on the screen as well. Mike, can we ask your opinion of what you saw here on this second play of our game? You you guys are in mid-season form on your second play of the season. My God, it goes through his hands, so he doesn't get control, and then the ball's on the ground. So clearly looks incomplete to us here in Los Angeles. Thank you, Mike. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. Yeah, you saw it pretty clearly, Eric, right away, and, and I think as the officials are going to take a look at the replay, it's probably going, going to be confirmed that this is an incomplete pass, and, boy, that would have been... Horrible for KU to start that After game. reviewing the play, the ball hit the ground prior to the receiver gaining control. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass. It'll be third down. Now, Kevin Hassel, who is our referee, will have to pay for his meal in Manhattan tonight. They're not really thrilled with him, but that's the correct call. <laughs> you don't have to be happy about it, but it's the correct call. Our replay official making the final verdict, Don Capral. So, it stays with the Kansas Jayhawks. Let's see how adventurous they will get on third down and seven. Had an inside run and then the incomplete pass. Jalen Daniels, 17-year-old starting quarterback. Just unbelievable. He'll turn 18 into the middle of next week. Spins out of the pocket. Needs some help. Lowers the head. A lot of valor right there, but uh, maybe not a great decision. He gets pounded to the ground and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, Jalen Daniels, even in his very young career, has taken a lot of shots. He's a guy that is athletic. He's going to scramble around. But if you're going to do that and not throw the ball, you've got to be able to handle shots like that. Ooh, from Elijah Sullivan, the linebacker, bam, right there. Great shoulder tackle. There's nothing about that is that is leading with your helmet. So good technique there by Sullivan. All right, we have a change at putter. This is going to be Donovan Gagan. He is punting in place of Kyle Thompson. And Gagan's first punt rolls out of bounds at the 38-yard line. It's a punt of 32 yards, and Kansas State will take over for the first time. All right, Kansas State, the Wildcats, they lost their first game of the year against Arkansas State. That was disheartening. But ever since, they have been a house of fire. Three straight Big 12 wins. And now onto their second quarterback with Skylar Thompson out. Will Howard gets another starting opportunity. Yeah, it's a big miss to have Skylar out of this lineup. I mean, the guy's still a rally behind him. He's still at practice now that he's back from his injury. And uh, on the sidelines helping out. But he's need to help out Will Howard as much as he can. First offensive play, this is Deuce Vaughn. And Vaughn, still on his feet, actually takes three Jayhawks to bring it down. 
Deuce Vaughn listed at 5'5", 168, but he's a tough, tough runner. Well, he's a tough runner, and he can hit that edge so quickly. You wouldn't think with a guy that has sort of a short stride that he could pick up his feet that quickly, get to the edge, show off the speed. You obviously know he's got foot quickness in and out of the hole, but it's that speed that the perimeter, I think, is deceptive. Now Vaughn leaves, Keon Mosey replaces him in the backfield. One true freshman replacing the other. They fake it to Mosey. Howard's pass incomplete. He was looking for Malik Knowles. That's a pass broken up. Karan Prunty, what's new? Last week for Kansas against West Virginia, they were exceptional at breaking up passes defensively. Yeah, they were exceptional, and that's one area of this defense that this coaching staff was really excited about. DJ Elliott said, we really like our corners. They're tall, they're long, they're athletic, and Prunty, being a young freshman from Virginia, he's one of these guys that they highlight and said, we love his upside. He's making plays every week. Deuce Vaughn back in the ball game on third down and eight. You're going to see him in the backfield, and that's where they like to line him up in some passing situations is to line him up in the backfield. It's hard to get a strong safety or corner lined up on him. You see Denzel Feaster has the one-on-one -on -one from off the ball coverage, and it's just too much space. It's too much separation for a guy that quick and athletic to get some space for Will Howard to throw the ball. I like the high step. First down and 10, and a whistle. Ball start. Offense, number zero, five-yard penalty, still first down. Senior tight end, Briley Moore, should have known better. It'll be first down and 15. Well, my guess on that is he's not jumping because he's going to get involved in the run game. He's jumping because they're getting to that point in the field where you're going to start taking shots, and as the second leading receiver on this team, his number was probably dialed up. Harry Trotter comes into the game in the backfield. Trotter wears number two. And a nominal gain on first down. He's basically back to the line of scrimmage. Stephen Parker on that tackle. Well, Stephen Parker has been one of these, these young outside rushers in this 3-4 system that has been getting in the backfield a lot, whether he's unblocked because of a miscommunication up front with the offensive line or he's just flat out beating somebody with speed. You're going to see number 14 in the backfield a lot this game. Second down and a bunch. Quick hitter. And the whistle stops play. The pass was complete out in space. But it's blown off. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 76. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. K-State, their own worst enemy right now. Yeah, that's uncharacteristic of any K-State team, whether it's Bill Snyder or Chris Kleiman, to have uh, some some pre-snap penalties. You get one on Briley Moore early, and then you get another one on left guard Josh Rebus on the offensive line. So it's second down at 20. Trying to stay in field goal range now. Howard wants a bunch. Well, it's Knowles lined up on the outside, man-to-man. -man, and these are the plays that he has to make. There he is there, and it's going to be just an outside vertical shot down the field. And he's had many opportunities this season to make plays like that. Wow, that was fantastic defense at the exact right time by Prunty. He hacked the right arm of Knowles, and that caused the incompletion. Third down, wheeling out of the backfield, trying to find Schwatter, and the pass is incomplete. So it's a fourth down and 20. After getting the first down inside the 25, they lose 10 yards and gain none of it back. So a decision here for Kansas State. 
Well, if it worked once with Deuce Vaughn, why not try it again with a different running back? They did not cover the back out of the backfield on the wheel route before with Deuce Vaughn catching the ball, and this time they put Harry Trotter back there, and he just looked like he had a little bit of a miscommunication with Will Howard on where that ball was supposed to be placed. This is interesting now. The quarterback, Will Howard, still on the field. They're on the outskirts of deep field goal range. You think maybe a punt would be in order. It's going to be hard to convert a fourth down and 20. What is Coach Kleiman thinking about? Well, I think he's got a lot of faith in his defense is what I'm going to guess. And he knows that this KU offense, it looks like now they're going to make the wise decision to bring special teams out on the field. But there is that thought that, hey, we could go ahead on, on the offense. So they'll take the delay again. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. They'll back him up five more yards and give them an opportunity to pin this ball down on a more uh, natural punt here as opposed to a close punt into the uh, into their own end zone. It ties in. Comes in to put the football away. It's the tip of the ball. Spinning kick. Fair catch made at the seven-yard line. So when we come back, Kansas back on offense for the second time. The 110th consecutive meeting, the Sunflower Showdown in Manhattan. Trying to do more with less. Les Miles, his team, the Kansas Jayhawks, had a three and out first time they had the football. And they're playing without Puka Williams for the rest of the season. Early this week, he opted out of the season. Uh, the junior was such a huge part of what they're doing offensively for the first three years on campus. Yeah, he's been he's been dynamic. I mean, every time you have to get ready for this Kansas offense, you have to know where Puka's at. So, like I said in the beginning, you get, they got to find a new identity without him. Yeah, they give it to Belton Gardner. And Gardner is able to pick up a yard, maybe two. That's now four plays, eight total yards for Kansas. Well, and Felton's one of those guys that they, they really like him. You know, he doesn't have quite the, the dynamic ability that Puka does. But he's more of an inside runner. He still has some speed to the outside, but there is a little bit of a drop-off between he and Puka. Two consecutive carries right up the gut for Gardner. And it'll bring up third down and six. Well, this is the, the area of the game that Coach Les Miles talked about. He, he liked the sequence of events from last week's game against West Virginia. And part of that sequence of events from special teams into offense was they have to take care of first and second down. They can't get third and longs with Jalen Daniels or any quarterback in there. So far, not doing too good. Three receiver formation and Daniels pass at the feet of Kwame Lassiter, the second. So that'll be back to back three and outs for Kansas offensively which is a bit frustrating because they were very happy with the first quarter that they put up a week ago in Morgantown when they led the Mountaineers 10 to nothing. Yeah, they definitely had some momentum and created some momentum, momentum defensively by taking the ball away. They got a field goal out of it. But then they sort of sputtered out into the second half. They got to find a way to get him running the football a little bit more. Another punt by Gagan, who is taking over for Thompson today. And this is going to be fantastic starting field position for Kansas State. There is a flag down as Gagan went down after punting the football. Phillip Brooks, though, on a return, brought it out to the 30-yard line, but this could be a personal foul against Kansas State. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that looks like Ross Elder, who was on the almost receiving end of an interception on the second play of the game. You gotta keep in mind, this Kansas State special teams has been outstanding in the early parts of the season. They blocked a field goal or a punt in every game that they've played so far. So every time you line up, you cannot take a deep. Running into the kicker. Defense number 19. It's a five yard penalty. Replay fourth down. Oh, it's a killer. Cause it's only the five yard variety and it was fourth down and six. It's now fourth down and one. and that close to your end zone there's no chance you're going forward on fourth down and one so it'll be another punting opportunity for Gagan yeah I think that's the smart decision to make I mean your offense right now has not found any rhythm there's no confidence there so even though it's only one yard I think it's safe right here that they just punt this thing away Philip Brooks is the deep man very conservative on the rush Kansas State Brooks has his hands on the football 
This time tries the left side, and another wonderful return for Brooks. He's got a chance. Philip Brooks, touchdown, K-State. Second time's a charm for the Wildcats. First score of the game, and it comes on special teams. Well, we talked about the blocked kicks, but it's also about watch him set up this left return. Look at all the purple jerseys just making that wall to the left side. Then he gets a key block at the end, and that thing is taken to the house. You don't not only get to worry about your protection teams against Kansas State, you got to worry about the actual return. Non-offensive touchdowns for Kansas State. They've made a living out of it for the last three decades. And it's Phillip Brooks that gets the opening punt for Kansas State to take it in for a touchdown. As we come back, K-State 7, KU 0. It was a punt return by Phillip Brooks, and it's all about blocking. you got to block down the field. That's the key block on the punter, Gagan, that really sprung Phillip Brooks into the end zone. So once again, like I said, you, you have to be careful in your protection teams on special teams and also in the return game going against Kansas State. Brock Monty from Wichita with the block of the punter, Gagan, to spring Brooks. Now, there was no winner last week, so this Sunday, Fox Bet Super 6 is giving you another chance at $1 million. You can play for free right now, so download the Fox Bet Super 6 app and make your pick for Sunday's games for a shot at $1 million. All right, more offense for Kansas. They've had a whole bunch of nothing so far. They've had the football twice, and they've had a three and out in both possessions. So we're not even six minutes into the game, and some frustration offensively for Kansas. Daniels wants a bunch. He was looking for parchment, and a flag comes in late. A late flag. Justin Gardner was in coverage, and this may be a bit of good news for the Jayhawks. Yeah, Justin Gardner had tight coverage, but this ball was slightly under Pass interference. Defense, number six. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. And when that receiver, you feel that receiver trying to work back to the football or slowing down, I know it's really tough as a corner to make that mid-stride adjustment, but that's where they got him. He's got to turn around just a little bit to get his eyes back, but pass interference on Justin Gardner. Best play for Kansas has been the Kansas State penalty. Five penalties for 35 yards for Kansas State. Gardner going nowhere. Aggressive defense early. That is Bronson Boom Massey. Negative two. Well, and Massey's one of these guys. He's going to be on the right defensive line for Kansas State. Just unblocked off the edge. They've got to make a decision if they're going to leave him free or they're going to kick him out. There's a little bit of confusion on the lead block, and he goes right around and makes another play. He's another guy on this defensive front for Kansas State that always seems to shine. Yeah, we have to talk about Wyatt Hubert, but Massey is really good as well. How did that pass make it through? This is a catch by Lassiter, a little juke step, and gets out to the 45-yard line. That's what seniors do. Bobby Lassiter in the second, make it a play in space. Well, that was a nicely thrown ball right when it had to be thrown. Right when Lassiter put his foot in the ground, that ball was released, and thankfully so, because A.J. Parker was trying to make a play on it. 16th catch on the year for Lassiter. That's a pickup of 15 yards. Daniels, straight drop back. And he goes down. Eli Huggins, Drew Wiley meet him in the backfield. And that'll be a negative play. Well, Kansas State is a little unique in their defensive philosophy. They have four down linemen most of them. Most of the people in the Big 12, three down linemen. They get more guys in the secondary, but they get four big guys up front. And they don't blitz a lot. They're going to rely on those guys up there, the guys like Eli Huggins, Drew Wiley, to create plays with just a four-man rush. So second down at 15. Gardner next to Daniels in the backfield. Quick throw. And another catch 
for Lassiter. Elder brings him down. So they pick up basically what they lost on the sack. And it'll bring up third down and long. Well, again, we're facing... Kansas is facing another third and long situation. They're not doing what they need to be doing, at least to what their approach was, and their philosophy was being great on first and second down. That's not happening, and they're putting the young quarterback in some precarious situations by creating third and long situations. Kansas looking to convert their first third down. They're 0 and 2 in third down situations. Daniels quick out of the pocket, trying to run there. who had his teeth rattled by Keandre Thomas. Well, and that's sort of the, the option that he can give you being this dual threat athletic quarterback. Kansas State opts to drop out a guy in the front. So only a three-man rush. They were getting ready for the quarterback scramble. He just ran away from the dropping defensive end, found a seam and found a lane and picked up a first down. Gain of 11. Fresh set of downs. Inside run. Daniel Highshaw. Another one of these true freshmen that we're talking about all afternoon long. He is from Moore, Oklahoma. Tough run, pick up a four. A pick up a four, but it seems very routine. But the thing I liked about what KU's doing right now, they're starting to feel themselves. You look at the offensive line, they created a new line of scrimmage on that run. They got to get those big guys up front. They're young, inexperienced, but get those guys moving forward. Look grim. Could have been motion. He is the speed merchant. Trying to get him in space. Daniels in trouble. Makes a man miss. And Daniels is inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. A.J. Parker tripped him up. Well, it's going to be Justin Hughes off the edge. It's the late movement that Kansas State's doing with their second-level linebackers. They line them up in their traditional spots, and right before the snap of the football, they're going to move right to the outside and bring that fourth or fifth rusher, and they're unblocked. Justin Hughes had a chance to make the play, but Daniels did enough just to get outside the pocket. Third down and two, getting ready for the eighth play of the drive. Highshaw in the backfield with Daniels. Impressive for the Jayhawks. High shot. Lost the ball late, trying to extend it. It is chopped on. Kansas still has the football. Lopetti, Adagio Lopetti was Johnny on the spot. It would actually be in Kansas' best interest if they ruled that a fumble. Yeah, the old fumble forward play. <laughs> <laughs> Just like they drew it up. I think that was a legitimate fumble that Lopetti jumped on. Early on the field is a fumble. Forward, recovered by the offense, resulting in a first down. Well, it looks like maybe the left knee is down before that ball is clipped. The ruling on the field is a fumble, recovered by the offense, and the previous play is under further review. This is a rare circumstance where it looks like replay is of a fumble is actually going to be disappointing news this is going to be overturned this is clearly not a fumble and it's going to mean that they're short of the line to gain it's going to bring a fourth down well the only thing i'd have to look at in that angle was was the ball kind of moving before that ball came out and uh we'll take a break here as they take a look at this fumble ruling on the field is fumble we'll take a break and we'll come right back overturned it was a fumble and because of the fumble recovered by Kansas over the first line line but that's been wiped away so they're short of the line to gain it's fourth down and two Kansas goes for it and look at the kid Jalen Daniels with some fight has got a first down for the Jayhawks uh, what a range of emotion if you're less miles than as a staff you see the play sort of get blown up the time means all thrown off in the backfield you're like oh no this is fourth and one, but look at the creativity. Look at the athleticism with the spin and the fall forward just enough to pick up that fourth down conversion. He's listed at six feet, 200 pounds, but I'm telling you, he ran hard. Tenth play of the drive. Not much there at all. 
there with number zero. And it was Gardner on the carry. Yeah, nice play by Cody Fletcher, the reserve linebacker that comes in every once in a while. They're going to spell a lot of these guys. It happens a lot now in college football where you're not just going to see the same 11 guys on defense all the time because there's just too many plays. The tempo's too fast, so they got to give these guys a breather. And Cody Fletcher's been one of those guys that's very natural at that linebacker position, and he kind of rocked back, found the lane, and made the tackle. Pick up of one, second down and nine. Four receivers set. Lassiter, that's his third catch, but that is his shortest catch of the game. It'll bring up third down and long. Only completions so far for Daniels had been to the senior, Kwame Lassiter. Kansas State's defense right now is just sitting short in those zones. They are trusting the fact that Daniels is not going to press the ball down the field with much efficiency, so they're just sitting short. They're going to tackle everything that's in front of them. This Kansas offense is going to have to do something to find a way to take the top off this defense and keep this defense from jumping a lot of underneath routes. 12th play of the drive. Third down at six. And a whistle. And Kansas, probably wise. Prior to the expiration of the play clock, timeout, Kansas, their first charge to the half. So Les Miles, on the field. instead of taking a loss of five with the delay of game, they call the timeout, still have two more remaining here in our first half. We'll take a timeout with them back to Manhattan in a moment. A special teams touchdown has K-State on top of Kansas 7 to nothing, but Kansas doing good things on this drive and because of it using up a whole bunch of clock. 11 plays, 52 yards, 6 minutes, 10 seconds of possession on this one drive. And it really was the uh, the catalyst was that fourth and one that they had to pick up and so here they are uh, knocking on the red zone here for K-State's defense. Third down and 6. Daniels with the drop, escapes the pocket, but can't escape the grasp of Boom Massey, who brings him down. That'll bring up a fourth down. Because Bronson Massey again talked about his ability to get in the backfield and make plays. And you know, you gotta you gotta credit the Kansas State coverage. That's one of those coverage scramble situations where the defensive front didn't cause that. It was all the confusion in the back end, and that's what led to Massey getting to the quarterback. So a field goal attempt. So we have 40 yarder. Jacob Orchilla comes in. And Kansas sure would like to get a score after this impressive drive. The holder is the putter, Donovan Gagan. Down, kick is up. The right up there. Missed opportunity for the Jayhawks. The iron up kind. Kansas still the goose egg on their side of the scoreboard. Well, how unfortunate. We just talked about how long the drive was, the key plays that kept the drive alive, and it's just a little bit of a push and a kiss off the right upright. All of that work does not amount to any points there for Kansas, but there's still a lot to, to like about the way their offense was able to move the ball in small chunks and keep the chains going. So still some positivity, just no points on the board. You can make the argument if that kick was actually two yards longer, it may have actually curved in. <laughs> she was hooking at the last half, yeah. just didn't hook it up. All right, 228 remaining here in our first quarter. This is the second possession for Kansas State. They scored their touchdown on a punt return. Deuce Vaughn, delayed handoff. And he can't scoot out of that tackle. Nice play by the corner. Karan Prunty. And a flag is down. Yeah, oddly we have a flag on the opposite side of where the play was running. Looks like this is going to be Kansas State again. Personal foul. Illegal block will have the waste on the offense. Number zero. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. We'll replay first down. Would the game clock operator please reset the clock to two minutes and 20 seconds? Two minutes and 20 seconds on the clock, please. Well, there it is right here. That's Briley Moore. This is his second penalty today. He had a false start committed. And then when you go down in the box like that, you no longer can go down on a guy at his knees. You have to man up and take him up high. Should have known better. 
Three-year starter at Northern Iowa before transferring to play FBS football for his senior season. Harry Trotter with an opportunity. Nominal gain. It'll bring up second down and long. Well, and that's really been the story so far for Kansas State's offense is they can't get out of their own way. The first drive, there are multiple penalties, multiple false starts on the offense that set them back. They could not get any rhythm, and they start off this drive with another penalty and put their, their quarterback, who, who needs all the yards that he can get, any manageable situations that he can get, and they're just not doing it for him. Will Howard, 19 years of age, true freshman from Downington, Pennsylvania. Calls his own number. Looks like that was a design quarterback delayed run. And look at Howard go all the way across the 35-yard line. A flag comes in late. Well, you see the flag come in, and immediately you see Harry Trotter, the running back, throw his arms up in the air like he can't believe. Holding offense, number two. Penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Still second down. When is the last time Kansas State had seven penalties in the first quarter? That's a huge number. That's a huge number. Like I said, they just can't get out of their own way. You're going to see Trotter right there in the middle of your screen. He's got his arms latched around. That's not really the problem. You know, it's hard to always get your hands on the inside, on the leverage and the inside part of the shoulder pads. It's that little bit of a pull. When the defender wants to get away, you have to let them go. You see a little bit of that jersey pull, and they're going to throw that flag every time. So second and 23. Going in reverse. Just screens and draw situations. There's the draw. Senior Trotter. Dependable back transfer from Louisville. Wanted to come back home and play in state from Atchison, Kansas. It's now third down and a bunch. Well, this is a, as a defensive player, you'd be saying, again, screens and draws and most likely a screen. This is a KU defense that got hit on a bunch of screens in the West Virginia game that really, really hurt them. Kansas State has not ran one of those screens yet to test them on. They've ran a few real routes with success, but no screen passes just yet. Howard Jones completed one pass in the game. There's number two. It's Vaughn. He's got a whole bunch to get and didn't quite get there. Uh, he needed 20, he probably got 15, but it's fourth down and five, and the punt team will have to come on as uh, the final ticks of our first quarter evaporate off the clock. Well, just like I thought, the screen pass comes out to the offensive right side, and they do just enough to rally to make the tackle, and it would be gigantic conversion on third and 20. High punt. Lassiter fields it at the 22. And a whole bunch of nothing. He's tackled at the 22. There is a flag down. We've got a triple zeros here at the uh, our first quarter, but we'll sort out this flag before we continue. What do you want to guess? It's on Kansas State again. <laughs> During the kick. Holding, kicking team number 43. Penalty is 10 yards from the end of the kick. First down. Eight penalties in 15 minutes here in Manhattan for the homestanding K-State Wildcats. That is something that's going to have to be addressed. Hard to believe, but Kansas State actually does have the lead. They lead seven to nothing. The difference in the game, a punt return touchdown by none other than Philip Brooks. Correction. Kansas will have the ball, second down, trailing seven to nothing against Kansas State. Back to Manhattan in the moment. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Rocket Mortgage. Second quarter action, Manhattan, Kansas. Sunflower showdown, Kansas, Kansas State. So far, so good for the Wildcats. Punt return touchdown back in the first quarter, our only score. Second down. Bridges goes down. Jalen Daniels is tackled. And that is the first sack of the ball game for Wyatt Hubert once new. 
But watch this. This is a thing of beauty. I just happened to be watching him specifically. He's going to be over here. And then watch this little inside move. He splits the double team and keeps getting vertical and gets the sack. This guy, when we talk about him with the coaches, they're like, he is unbelievably explosive. And you saw all that on display on that sack. Junior from Topeka. It's a loss of six. Third down to 13. This will be ambitious if the true freshman quarterback, Jalen Daniels, does something aggressive to try and get this first down. Nope. Conservative play call. They give it to Gardner. And Gardner's still on his feet. Looking like Cooper Williams doing some scatting. And he is down at the 17-yard line, and they'll have to punt the football away. Not really sure what he was thinking about trying to cut back against the grain and get ground there. It looked like from my vantage point that if he just would have kept getting vertical and going downhill, he might have, might have had a chance to pick up the first down. But nevertheless, it's fourth and five, and the punt team's coming on the field. Big defensive play, the sack by number White. 12, Kansas State is now wearing number 94. And here he is, Phillip Brooks, back to field this punt. Last time he had his hands on the football, touchdown. Returnable kick. Brooks starts at the 41. Brooks to the edge. Phillip Brooks, are you going to do it again? Down to the 20, inside to the 17-yard line. Phillip Brooks has earned a scholarship here in the first half. Impressive return. After a touchdown of 42, this one a 40-yarder. Time out on the field for an injured player. And it's another left return. It's the left return that got him in the end zone in the first quarter. It's another big punt return here for Phillip Brooks. Special teams doing it all right now for Kansas State as they take over here in the second quarter. Been a difficult start for the punter, number 92 for Kansas, Donovan Gagan. Well, Gagan looks like we're looking at a left shoulder on the sidelines as he kind of brings his feet to a balance. Tries to get a good, clean hit on the Phillip Brooks. 19 yard line. Number 94, Kansas State, is now wearing number 12. Hmm. So we shall see. Gagan is filling in for Thompson as the lead punter. Next time Kansas has to punt, maybe a decision. Hand off, Deuce Vaughn. Looking for a wrinkle, gets down to the 11-yard line. Drew Freshman from Round Rock, Texas. Not only is he quicker than a hiccup, coaches were talking about his knowledge of the game as a young player, super smart. Yeah, very smart. He understands blocking angles. He understands defense and how it can change on the fly and then how his offensive blockers are supposed to adjust. That particular play right there was probably the best run play that they've had on the right side there. Got a nice block by Jax Deneen, the fullback. And the ball is loose. Howard was riding Vaughn as Vaughn was going by. Maybe a little option look. And the ball just pops out. K-State fortunate to keep it. Yeah, hard to tell in some of those mesh point issues if that's going to be a quarterback keeper. And it looked like he was. He's trying to pull that ball out. He saw that lane in there. As you get the offensive lineman pulling, everybody's moving to the left. He's found a seam straight down in the A-gap. Made a late decision. The ball just kind of popped out of his hands. Jumped on it right at the line of scrimmage. So it's now third down and three. Inside the red zone. Kansas State has been great in the red zone over the first two years of Chris Kleiman's watch. Timeout as the head coach with the Wildcats. Kansas State, their first charge to the half. And they want to make this a will be a 30 decision. second timeout. So they call the timeout in late. and make sure everyone's on the same page for a third down and three. Tomorrow on Fox, Aaron Rodgers leads the Packers against Deshaun Watson and the Texans, or the Cowboys square off with Washington for other regional action. Check local listings for the game in your area or watch anywhere on the Fox Sports app. Is it, is it funny that I'm actually more excited about the Lions-Falcons game than any? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, man, I, I think Atlanta, they made the coaching change and they're a different, different ball club playing against the Minnesota Vikings. You look at them on paper. They've got a lot of talent on that team. If they can turn things, some things around against uh, Detroit, they may have something there in that division. But Detroit themselves, man, I, I'm sort of like the, the Falcons. They have a lot of talent out there, and they're getting some, uh, some good play by the rookies right now. 
12 minutes remaining. Here in our first half, third down and three after the timeout. K-State still has two. See if they draw three receivers, bottom of your screen. Inside run, Vaughn, and that didn't fool anyone. Gavin Potter, sophomore from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. That'll be a loss of one. We'll just watch Potter and how he diagnoses this thing. He's just going to shoot that gap right there. Right when he sees that opening, he, there's no hesitation at all. There's not a lead blocker. There's not a puller. He knows if that gap opens up in that defense, he's going straight downhill to make the play. So the field goal unit will come on. This will be a 31-yard field goal. And the kick is good. Lake Lynch, how do you do? So the lead swells. It is now 10-0 K-State over Kansas. So far, so good for the locals. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, Kansas Jayhawks will have another crack at it. Back in a moment. Full band in the house. In full throat. Why not? Kansas State leads Kansas by a score of 10 to nothing. 11.23 remaining in our first half. Kansas has the football. Jayhawks, they have run a total of 21 plays, but they've only averaged about two and a half yards per play. So they've got 54 total yards. But they'll try to get in. Pretty nice return. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the uh, Sunflower Showdown. This uh, rivalry began back in 1902. How about 1969? Kansas State wins the first Governor's Cup. That's the first time the Dexy gave away the Governor's Cup. Only time that both teams are ranked, 1995. Uh, another 11-game winning streak for Kansas State. 2010, 100 consecutive meetings. Bill Snyder, of course, is a huge part of this rivalry. His 200th career victory was back in 2016. And the beat continues. Meeting number 118 overall, 110 consecutively. Daniels has his pass batted at the line. Second down and 10 for the Jayhawks. Well, if you can't get to the quarterback, and the quarterback's going to telegraph exactly where he's going to throw it, just put your hands up, and that's what Drew Wiley does, the defensive tackle. Doesn't get a lot of push, but these guys are coached. Once you see that guy, that quarterback, take his hand off the ball and get the throwing motion, get your hands up. Milton Gardner has got the lion's share of the work in the backfield for Kansas with no Puka Williams. Gardner next up to Daniels in the backfield. Straight drop back. This has been the best offense for Daniels, is just calling his own number and running it. He picks up five yards, it'll bring up third down. Well, and it gets really hard going against this Kansas State defense that they don't play a lot of man coverage. And so that means on the quarterback draws and the quarterback run game, you don't have a lot of guys turning their back away from the quarterback in coverage. They sit in this cover four zone. They get a lot of eyes on the quarterback. So as long as there's no threat to throw the ball behind them, these guys are just going to rally up and make a tackle on Jalen Daniels all day. Third and five. Daniels. Gardner out of the backfield. Did he climb over the line again? It'll depend on the spot. Quarterback Echo Boydo with the tackle. But Gardner was able to leap forward, and he's marked a yard short. It'll bring a fourth down and one. Yeah, that was going to be an interesting spot as he, he did sort of lunge ahead at the last moment, but um, they stopped him short. Well, short. That's a good yard away from the first down. Les Miles going for it. Are they going for it? On his side of the 50. Oh, my. Gutsy. Delayed handoff. Slow start. Nothing there. High shot. Oh. decision, not the results uh, that Les Miles wanted. Kansas, a four and out. They give the ball up on down.
Well, welcome back. Let's go back to that fourth and one play for the Kansas Jayhawks on their own 38. Jerron McPherson is going to be the one that makes the play off the edge. But it's the guys up front, the offensive line, that don't get any push. And you have to credit the defense up front for creating that wall. K-State, wonderful field position. Duke Fulton knows what to do with it. Inside the 25 to the 21. This is wild for number 22. Well, they found some success on the right side of this offensive line. They found it last drive, and they go right back to the well on the first play of this drive. And you'll see Vaughn just kind of bounce this thing around to the right side. And the defense not doing enough to fill the gaps to get in there. You see the pulling guard, and he runs those, those pulling situations so tight, and he's so little, five foot five. He just kind of hides behind those big offensive linemen. Hard to see for the defense. Best run of the day, 17 yards produced. They give it to him back to back, and he is tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Not much doing. Steven Parker uh, with the tackle. Hey, just going back to that fourth down decision for Les Miles. Just throwing it out there. The previous time that Kansas had the ball, they punted it away. Their backup punter, Donovan Gagan, um, he landed awkwardly and was tended to on the field. So there's a, a decent chance that maybe Kansas is worried about their punting situation, and that's why they went for it in fourth down and one. Yeah, that's, that's a very sound logic of why they would go for it on their own 38-yard line. When you now you talk about both punters are out, at least for right now, injured um, on, that, on that one punt return. Howard. That was blown up. Tried to get it to Vaughn, but had to do it way faster than he would have liked because of pressure in his face. Well, you can see the pressure just come right off of the left side for the offense. It's awfully hard sometimes when you quick snap like that, you get some late movement, and you get a guy that's unblocked to your quarterback. Steven Parker plays that jack position for Kansas. It'll bring up a third down. Kansas State has not been great shakes. They are just one for four in third down conversions. Neither team doing work on third down. Go, go, go! Plenty of time for Howard. Over the middle, passes caught. That is Moore right at the sticks. First catch for Briley Moore, the senior tight end. It'll depend on where he spotted. Well, well, they give it to a, a fantastic job by Bradley Moore just understanding what the coverage is going to be. Here he is right here, and he's going to sit down. Right when he sees that it's a zone coverage, he's supposed to bend that back to the middle of the field. He feels that zone coverage. He's like, all right, they're not going to throw me the ball here, so let me sit this down, turn around, and make me a big open target for Will Howard. A little personal history for Bradley Moore. That is his 100th career catch. Tip of the cap. They take the speed sweep. And the quarterback, Howard, keeps it. And he is down inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. Well, that's always a big part of any K-State offense is the running ability of their quarterbacks. They like their quarterbacks to be passers first, but they also like their quarterbacks to be able to run with the football. You know, last game uh, against TCU, he had a huge run, Will Howard did, in that game. And uh, you're going to see a lot of the quarterback sneaks and design quarterback plays out of Will Howard as well. Second down, they can get a first down without getting a touchdown. And out of bounds at the six-yard line for Howard. Discretion, the better part of Valor. He'll have another down to play with. Third down. Yeah, sometimes you don't really want to stick your head down <laughs> like that and really power through. you got to pick your spots to play tough guy as a quarterback. True freshman, he is not 17 years of age like his counterpart for Kansas, Jalen Daniels is. Will Howard is 19, but he looks the part. 6'4", 230 pounds from eastern Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia, Downington, PA. Third down at five, line to gain is the one. Howard dumps it underneath, and the catch is made, but well short of the marker. Nick Lenners, first catch not only of the game, but of the season, and it's fourth down. Well, it's going to be late movement by the defense this time to come around the left side of the defense unblocked. You see the slanting defensive lineman that gobbles up all the potential blockers up front for Kansas State. And it's a free hitter on the outside. Gavin Potter lays a nice lick on Will Howard. That wasn't that bad. I know Howard would have liked it if Lenners could have kept his feet and did a little run after catch. 
21 yard attempt is up and through. Second field goal for Blake Lynch here in our second quarter. So the lead swells to a Baker's dozen. 13 love, K State. Welcome back, everyone. This is what uh, is on the line. Sunflower Showdown, and the winner gets the Governor's Cup. They've been giving out that Governor's Cup since 1969. And for the last better part of more than a decade, it has stayed in Manhattan. K-State Wildcats have done work against the Jayhawks. Average margin of victory has been 26 points. So really, haven't had many, many close games. No, they really haven't. And, uh, and Coach Kleiman for Kansas State has kept that Governor's Cup in the center of the locker room all week long. So all the guys, when they come in the locker room throughout the day, they are motivated to keep that cup right there at Kansas State. It showed you how futile football was at K-State for so many years. The fact that they're still well behind Kansas on the all-time list of wins against each other. Yeah, you look at the history of Kansas State, they, they were going to fold the program before Bill Snyder came in. Like, all right, we'll give this guy a chance to see if he can turn this thing around. And Turns out it was the greatest turnaround in, in college football history. Ball starts at the 25-yard line. It has been all Jalen Daniels, true freshman from Lawndale, California. He's taken every snap at quarterback. Best thing he's done has run the football. Chooses to run here and picks up three yards on first down. He's tackled by Robert Hintz. Jalen Daniels, his third start, didn't play a week ago in the loss against West Virginia. It was Miles Kendrick. But uh, after a foot lower leg injury, he's healthy. And Les Miles said, you know what, he's the future. Let's go with him and see what happens. Yeah, they, they love his energy. They love what he can bring. Obviously, still a lot of growth to do, but they love the package and how raw he is and how moldable he is. Throwing it up for grabs. Nobody home. And it'll bring up third down and eight. Well, it looked like he was trying to target Kwame Lasseter, who's gotten a bulk of the targets and receptions today for Kansas' offense. There was a clear out on the outside, and he was supposed to sneak in there in that voided area, and he was just going to drop the ball in there. But the timing was off, and yet another incomplete pass and another third and long situation for Kansas. Third downs have been a nightmare for Kansas. Just one out of seven in converting them. Throwback. Oh, my goodness. That's going to be a pick six. No doubt about it. Justin Gardner, just in time. Touchdown, K-State. Their second non-offensive touchdown of the half. What a dangerous throw that was by Daniels, and you just can't do that with Justin Gardner lying away. Well, I talked about this Kansas State defense, and you can see Gardner over here is just going to be waiting. Kansas State defense plays a lot of zone coverage, so they can just sit back as long as you play your area of the field. Stay home. We tell our guys all the time as defensive players, just stay home. If the action goes away, don't chase. That's not your play to make. Your play is if anything comes back to you, and he read that perfectly for a pick six. So Kansas State, after an inauspicious start, they've started to figure things out. A punt return touchdown and now a defensive touchdown with a couple of field goals and they lead 20 to nothing over the Kansas Jayhawks. Well, again, I talk about staying home. He's going to be on your right side of your screen. And the action's going away, and that's fine. You're not going to make any plays over there. Just make yourself available if something comes back. He guesses right. He stays true. He stays disciplined. They're trying to set up a screen pass on the other side, and the ball floats right into his chest. All right, Ben Lieber, you an All-American linebacker. Is what Justin Gardner just did, was that uh, film work? Did he understand the play as it was unraveling, or was it just instincts? That's constant drilling by the coaches to stay disciplined. You know, understanding that don't try to do too much. You hear guys talk about that all the time. Like, don't try to do too much. You do your job. You know, New England Patriots, Bill Belichick, he's famous for that sort of phrasing. Like, do your job. That's a, that's a case in point of a guy just doing his job. Jamal Horn back deep to return this kickoff, and he decides not going to do it. It's a touchback ball to be placed at the 25-yard line. All right, two true freshman quarterback going after it. Jalen Daniels and Will Howard. And the interception, that is a big differentiating stat 
Uh, we'll cut it for seven points for Kansas State. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, KU had to come into this game and and play clean football and not give the ball away and do things like that. Like that, they're clean on penalties so far. That's all been been taken up by Kansas State not playing super disciplined. But so far, the storyline for this game is special teams for Kansas State's winning, and their defense right now is taking advantage of the young quarterback. Little crack at it for Kansas. Gardner in the backfield. They give it to him. And Gardner spins out to the 29-yard line. Pick up a four. Now, Kansas has had a real difficult time winning on the road. That's been a big story for the better part of a decade. They have lost 51 consecutive Big 12 road games. They haven't won on the road since 2008. It's going to be hard to do this afternoon. Already down 20. Delayed handoff. Gardner out across the 30 to the 31. All right, Jayhawk fans, look the other way. Since 2009, this is all road games. This includes a game uh, against the Mid-American Conference team and again against the ACC team, which is two road wins since 2009. Yeah, that, that's hard to stomach if you're a KU fan. If you're a KU player, you know, that's a lot of long, quiet drives on the way home and fight homes. Ball's loose on the ground, picked up again by Daniels. Oh, wonderful improvisation. Catch is made by the tight end, Mason Fairchild. And a wonderful play uh, made out of nothing, really, for the Kansas Jayhawks. Well, this broken play is going to be Mason Fairchild's first reception of the year. And sometimes, just like on one of their third down conversions, a broken play in the backfield, and Jalen Daniels has to make the play. This time he drops the ball, broken play, Fairchild makes the play. You would think a guy by the name of Mason would have stone hands, but he actually has really soft hands. Best thing he does is catch the football. <laughs> Kwame Lasseter with the catch, his fourth catch of the first half. Four catches, 31 yards for Lasseter. Second down and one. All right, all of a sudden something going on here for Kansas. Lasseter again, his fifth catch. Little Zuzu makes the first man miss, makes the second man miss, and then the first man comes back to get him. Ross Elder said, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. And you know who's loving this drive right now for Kansas is their defense. Their defense, these this early parts of the season has faced a lot of snaps. Take a look at Lasseter with his shake. There's one shake. Oh, got you there. Ooh, hand on the ground, another shake, another shake, and he finally gets taken down to the ground. Three and a half remaining here in our first half. Daniels wind up, catch is made, sliding to the ground. First catch of the day. That is uh, Ezra Naylor with the grab. Naylor had not made a catch all season long, but it's in the mix this afternoon. Senior from Atlanta. And that was the most confident throw that Daniels has had today. Press set it down, ball to 15 yard line. Again, a strike. And again, it's Lasseter. Six catches for Kwame Lasseter the second. This game means a lot to him. Born and raised, obviously, in Arizona. His father, Kwame Lasseter, the late uh, Kwame Lasseter. I played for the Cardinals in the NFL, but he's a I'm alum out. of Kansas, for an injured player. in Kansas Jayhawk football. And growing up, Kwame Lasseter said, that's where I want to play if given the opportunity. Well, and I had... I played with his father, a uh, tremendous man his father was, and, and I do love the story that he wants to follow in his dad's footsteps, and they talked, we, we asked Les Miles about him, he said, he's one of these guys you never have to talk about in practice, he just does everything right. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime Show, we'll get you ready for Iowa State and Oklahoma State, two teams that are ranked Big Ten is back, we'll also take a look at Michigan, Minnesota, Penn State, and Indiana, back is bursting. Second down and three. Eighth play of the drive. Jayhawks dreaming big dreams. To the end zone. Caught butt. Inbounds. Touchdown. Andrew Parchment. How did he keep his feet inbounds? Well, this is going to be an interesting review because I think that this is going to have to be reviewed. From my angle, it looked like his foot just touches the white as he comes down. Ooh. That's awfully close from that angle. 
Looks like he steps out of bounds. But how about this throw, though? And that's the only place that you could put that football is high and away from any defender. The ruling on the play. The ruling on the play is a touchdown, and the previous play is under further review. Okay, so the ruling on the field touchdown means that you need to have uh, indisputable video evidence to overturn. Do we have that? Do we fit those uh, parameters here on the play back of the end zone by Parchment? I think we do. I think we we see enough. There's enough of the shoe and the foot that's. But did the toe the touch first before the back heel came down? Uh, you, you can tell even where the the little the particulates of the the surface, the rubber kind of kicks up in that white area. And I know that's a little bit nitpicky, and I know that we're looking at it frame by frame, but at least to me, it looks like his foot does touch the outside out-of-bounds area, and that, to me, is an incomplete catch. First time I've ever done a football game, and the analyst mentioned particulates. I'm in front of Ben Lieber. <laughs> All right, uh, the answer man, Mike Perea, is standing by. Mike, your thoughts on what we're looking at. The answer man is, a, is a, almost at a loss here, but uh, this is one of these that are so tight. Remember, you have what's called the natural step. So even if the toe comes down first, if the heel comes down out of bounds, that would make it incomplete. Um, is there a drag of any kind here? There really isn't. So now they're looking at, did the heel get all the way to the ground? And if in fact the toe is down really um, out of bounds anyways, I, very close. But to me, when I look at the shots that were given them, I think it's incomplete. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, I, uh, I'm stagging you on here, Ben, but I, I, I think that there is enough to overturn. But And again, it's not up to us, right? Well, and, and I think the, the back judge was smart to call that a touchdown initially. Even if he had a little bit of indecisiveness on what it was, it's smart to call it a touchdown knowing that you're going to get a review. Um, so they'll take some time to, to get this right. Let's, and the thing is, as I mentioned, let's go back to this throw. I talked about how confident Jalen Daniels has been. After reviewing the play, the runner's foot came down out of bounds. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass. It will be third down at the eight-yard line. And I think we all agree that that's the right call. But again, Jalen Daniels has had a few throws in this drive where he's played with a lot more zip, much more decisiveness on where he wants to go with the football. And that one, again, the accuracy in the placement of that ball was exactly where it needed to go. All right, all is not lost for the Jayhawks. Take the touchdown off the scoreboard, and it's still just third down and three. This is doable. Daniels dual threat. He can run it if he wants to. The line to get is the five. to keep Daniels down for long. They put six on the board against Kansas State. We got a ball game again. This right here was this great feel by Jalen Daniels. You're going to see the blitzes come off the edges. He's going to feel everybody crash down. Look at the impact that they had on Gardner in the backfield. He knows if he pulls that football, he's going to have daylight into the end zone. So the rushing touchdown puts the Jayhawks on the board. Extra point. point is up and good for Chilla. Makes it a 20 to 7 game. And just when the Jayhawks needed it most, they get a score. They needed the drive. They needed an extension of this drive to give their defense a little bit of a break. And they needed to get down into the red zone and not just kick a field goal. They needed to put the ball in the end zone. And Jalen Daniels, he's starting to feel himself in the pass game and in the run game. Remember, the biggest play of that drive was right at the beginning on third down when he fumbled the snap and had to pick it up and found Mason Fairchild and got them moving in the right direction. And now he caps it off with the rushing touchdown. K-State number four is reporting we're at number one. K-State number four is now number one. All right, worry time here for Kansas, though, because K-State, the best thing that they have done is play special teams. They already have one special teams touchdown on the punt return for a touchdown by Phillip Brooks, and now they will try a kickoff return. We, we mentioned earlier just the, the plays to Fairchild and that, and that particular drive. And, you know, 
there is that old adage. Sometimes it's, it's better to be lucky than good. And, you know, you get a broken play, you put the ball on the ground, you pick it up, and you get Mason Fairchild extending the drive. And then again, I, I was just really impressed with the way Jalen Daniels has kind of settled into this game. You know, he seemed a little hesitant about what defense they were, they were throwing at him. You, you saw the pick six earlier in the, in the series before, and then he comes back. And I love that he didn't get down on himself at all. He showed that mental toughness that even after a pick six, I'm going to keep slinging that ball down the field. Tabor Allen kicks it off. Bouncing kick into the end zone and a touchback. All right, let's see how aggressive K-State will be. 13-point lead, 2-16 remaining in the second quarter. True freshman quarterback Will Howard. He's trying to limit the mistakes. Not a lot has been asked of him. Only eight passing attempts here in the first two quarters. He's four for eight passing, 66 yards. Well, I don't think they're going to get away from anything that they do in their whole approach. I still think you're going to get a little bit of Deuce Vaughn here, some uh, a good mix, good healthy mix of run pass. But I think they got to find a way to get Will Howard some confidence, just like we talked about with Daniels. He really hasn't gotten into a rhythm yet this game. Straight drop back. And a wobbler. Looking for a penalty, nothing thrown. Karan Prunty on the coverage of D.J. Render. It was one of those plays where Render's going to put his foot in the ground and try to work back to the outside, and that's why you saw the incomplete pass to his outside shoulder, and he's trying to say, hey, Prunty grabbed me at the top of the break, and obviously not enough there to throw the flag. Noah Johnson, senior center, will snap it to Will Howard. Always out of that pistol. Dump down, ball. Spins out close to the 30-yard line. Clock will continue to run. We're underneath two minutes here in our second quarter. Kenny Logan, the tackle, pick up a four. Third down and six. Yeah, checkdowns are not going to hurt you right now if you're Kansas State. You obviously, you just want to keep this a one-possession situation. You don't want to get the ball back into KU's hands. And so even a checkdown, getting the ball in, in the hands of your best playmaker on the field. But now you're still at third and six. Big conversion opportunity for Kansas State. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. And incomplete out in the flat. Again, looking for D.J. Render, nobody home. And that stops the clock, 131 remaining in the quarter, fourth and six. Well, I am a little confused that they didn't attempt to run the football at all and get some time off the clock as we take a look at this third down conversion attempt. And, you know, just a quick little out route there by Render. And that ball needs to come out, obviously, a little bit quicker, but a little bit more accurately as well thrown to the outside. Lassiter, back deep. Short putt, and it's muffed. It's loose. K-State has it. Wildcats have the football. What a big break for the Wildcats. Lassiter couldn't handle the short putt. Early on the field as the kick was muffed by the receiver. Recovered by the kicking team. First down and ten. Well, usually a sure-handed Lassiter has to come up, and you see a lot of punt returners make this mistake as they're tracking the ball. It's a short punt. It's more of a line drive, not a lot of hang time. So he's got to come up to try to field that thing, and those things sometimes drop at a faster rate when you got to come up and catch that ball, and it slips right through the breadbasket and into the arms of an awaiting K-State defender. So the senior Lassiter makes a mistake. And Kansas, Kansas State will look to capitalize. Time out of the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. 30 seconds in length. So we'll keep it here. 121 remaining in our first half. Millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why Fox Sports and Good Sports are restoring play for kids and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Help keep kids in the game by texting PLAY to the number on your screen. Well, it's been all about special teams this game. Really all siding on the side of Kansas State with the big returns by Phillip Brooks. And then they get a break here on their punt coverage unit. 
You get the muff. My last year goes right through his arms. And now this is the third time this game that KU started in KU territory. Vaughn out of the backfield. Room to run. Down the sideline. Still on his feet. Inside the 20. Lowers the head and gets down to the 16-yard line. That is a 160-pound running back in Deuce Vaughn, who plays so much bigger than his stature. Yeah, he really does. And like I said, we, we're going to check out the flag on the field. But sometimes those little swings and check downs and those short throws can turn into big gains. And that's why they just have to stay patient in the passing game. Wait to see to get Will Howard a little bit more involved getting the ball down the field. But when you've got a player like Deuce Vaughn, it's okay to take some of those little check downs and swing passes and see what he can do with it. What a wonderful weapon he is. It's just an outlet for a young quarterback. Nobody open down the field. Check down, give it to Vaughn, let him run. During the play, personal foul, targeting defense number three. Penalty is half the distance to the goal, and the previous play is under further review. Ricky Thomas called for targeting. And if he's lost for the game, that'll be the second straight game that Kansas has defensively have lost a player to targeting. We'll take a look at number three in white. That'll be Thomas at the end of this play. Oof. I, mm. Definitely didn't see what you hit. No, there's definitely a, a moment right there where he lowers his head. But, you know, I, I don't think that he's initi initiating contact purposefully at the head and neck area and certainly not exploding through his hips with an intent. And I know that intent is a big word when we look at targeting because it's, uh, it's very subjective, but... I think that's a really tough call for a defender when you've got a running back that's that small coming at you. Well, Mike Pereira, we absolutely value your opinion. You've seen this, uh, your thoughts on the targeting call on Ricky Thomas. Well, I mean, I certainly see why they called it because he does lead with the helmet. But to me, he's almost like bracing for contact. He's not like he's attacking, like Ben said, you know, so... I looked at these types of plays where, you know, is it the type of violent hit that you're looking at? Is it the forceful one? You know, I, I think he's set, kind of braces. And remember, you're looking at leading with the crown of the helmet here. So it doesn't have to be to the head or neck area. It just has to be leading and making forceful contact with that crown of the helmet. Um, I just look at it like you. I just, to me, it doesn't have all aspects like the attacking or crouching and then raising up from a crouch or launching. Um, I'd love to see them take it off. Yeah, if this does stand, thank you, Mike, um, it will be the end of the afternoon for Ricky Thomas. It's very similar to what we saw a week ago in Morgantown when Denzel Feaster got called for targeting in the first half and had to leave the game. After reviewing the play, it is determined there is no foul for targeting. It will be first down and 10 at the 16-yard line. Okay, that's good news. Let him play. <laughs> you know what I love? Yep. And I get that all home home teams are going to do this, but you, you heard that announcement and you heard some of the, the people in the crowd sort of booing. But, they, you know, if that was the reverse, the way, sure. you know, if that was on their team, you know, they'd be they'd be all uh, upset or whatever. But it's, it's, it's funny how that all works. So it's first down. Ball spotted at the 16-yard line. Will Howard, play action. Rolls to the right, to the end zone. A flutter ball, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Malik Knowles. I don't think that the ball was tipped. I just think that was a flat-out duck. Yeah, I think that just came out of his hand a little funky, and, and, and Malik Knowles is going to have another opportunity to make a play in the end zone, and he has to make that play. That That is a ball that's thrown exactly where it needs to be thrown. You know, I'll give him the fact that early in the, in the first quarter, he had an opportunity in the end zone where it got knocked away by the defender. That one right there was a, just a flat-out drop by Malik Knowles. It's more difficult to catch a fluttering football than a spiral, am I correct? Yeah, you got to make that play, man. All right. <laughs> Not if he falls in a spiral. Final minute of our second quarter. Dumped down. This has got a chance. It's a touchdown. Sammy Wheeler, sophomore tight end. Give him six. Sammy Wheeler's first touchdown of the season. A 16-yard catch and run. And Kansas State takes advantage of the muffed punt. Will they get points after?
after a takeaway, and that's always a huge thing. You're going to see him just drag across the field. A little bit of a mismatch situation going against the linebacker, Jay Deneen, and then it was just a foot race, and we talked to the coaches about Riley Moore and his importance to this offense as a tight end, and they said, hey, Sammy Wheeler's another guy that can run probably more receiver routes than just tight end routes. So the lead back up to 20. K-State taking advantage of every mistake made by the Kansas Jayhawks. The senior, Kwame Lassiter, the second, trying to get the ball back for the Jayhawks. He muffs the punt, and it leads to more offense for Kansas State. And it would have been a great opportunity had they put the, the field there and KU taken over at the end of the first half, but then it's the muff, and then you get all the way down the field with Sammy Wheeler just dragging across. Nothing special, just found a little bit of a mismatch in coverage there with the linebacker, and again, just a foot race to the end zone, and uh, nice to see Sammy Wheeler make an appearance and find his way into the end zone. You now the head coach for Kansas State has done this before, Chris Kleiman. He, they actually won the coin toss to begin the game, and they deferred the option to the second half. So they're actually going to begin the second half with the football. And if they can stop Kansas here, they've got a chance to double up in scores and really make this game a bit of a blowout early in the third quarter. Well, and that's always uh, that's sort of standard in what most coaches do. You win the coin toss, give yourself a chance to get the ball in the opening part of the second half. Wow. Wonderful tackle on special teams. Playing with their hair on fire right now. That was uh, Amarius Brown. Well, we have talked about special teams and watch this crossbody hit. That's perfect. It's a great job of getting his eyes and his helmet away. So that we, we just looked at a targeting by Ricky Thomas. There's no way that you could call targeting for a clean hit like that. He cross bodies, puts his body right on the football in the event that you knock that ball out. But we talk about how important special teams are. They don't have a special teams coordinator mm -hmm. for Kansas State. All the coaches, minus a couple, two coaches, are in these meetings. So the, the air of accountability for all these guys with the position coaches in the room is very high. State Farm Halftime Show coming up. But we still have 46 ticks remaining in our second quarter. Clock will continue to move. Short completion. It is uh, Ezra Naylor. Pick up of five yards for Naylor. Doesn't look like Kansas is in too much of a hurry. They probably want to get to the locker room and regroup. They do have one timeout. And Daniels pushed out of bounds. It's third down. 21 seconds remaining. Well, again, these are all good learning opportunities for a young quarterback like Jalen Daniels. You talk about just 17 years old getting the start today. And these are the, the game situations in which he has to feel. He's got to get everybody lined up. He's got to communicate across the field because a lot of these guys aren't going to come back to the huddle. So this is a, a, a big time learning thing that he has to go through. Third down and two. They don't get the first down. K-State call a timeout. Get the football back. Gardner makes the first man miss. And he's going to be short of the line to gain. Fourth down. Clock moves. And a whistle. A timeout. So the clock is stopped. Kansas State is going to make Kansas punt the football. Timeout. Kansas State, this is their second charge to the half. Will the game clock operator please reset the clock to eight seconds? Eight seconds on the clock, please. We mentioned the acumen Thank of Chris you. Kleiman. Uh, Chris so Kleiman knows that there could be seconds. issues right now going on with the punting game mm -hmm. with Kansas, and he wants to make them punt the football and see who they have that's actually healthy enough to put total leather. Well, even no matter who it's going to be, it's going to be your third guy in the depth chart. So I don't know if that's going to be a backup quarterback. That's going to be somebody that just has shown the, the ability to, to punt the ball in practice. But more importantly, regardless of the injury, it's all been about Phillip Brooks in the return game. So he's he's a dangerous guy, whether you have a full complement of starters on your punt Kansas State anyway. 12 is now wearing number 94. Kansas State 12 is 94. All right, this is Reese Berman. He is a true freshman. He is listed as a punter. He's from Bixby, Oklahoma. And a flag before the snap. Looks like a false start on what would be maybe Lawrence Arnold on the bottom. False start. Offense, number two. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Timeout on the field. 
We have a Kansas State Wildcat who is being looked at. It's sort of an odd way to get injured. I mean, that, that, that play was stopped before it even really began. So interesting to see. They're taking a look at his left ankle right now. It's A.J. Parker. Oh, yeah. Get hit by you're his own man. You're going to see he's he's right here. He kind of pulls up that left ankle right when he was making that turn around the bend. You, you'll see his left ankle just sort yeah. of twist out. I thought he got hit by his own man. It was actually before there was that meeting in the backfield. So A.J. Parker being helped to the sideline. And it stays at eight seconds remaining. Bill Brooks, first touchdown of the game, 55-yard punt return for a touchdown. Also had a 40-yard punt return. Tip of the cap to Reese Vernon. Came in cold, first punt of his college career. And Brooks showing that wiggle. Look at Brooks go! Well, they've had so much success going to the left, so they come right back to the right. Look at all the purple jerseys setting up the blocks. And it's this key block right here. That's the block that he needed to spring himself for. He broke one tackle, stayed on his feet, and just let all of his other 10 guys make plays for an unbelievable return. Second one of the day. That is the end of the first half. That is the end of 30 minutes. <laughs> it is a wonderful first half for Philip Brooks and Kansas State. Moments of protection brought to you by Allstate. Get better protected with Allstate. You've never been in better hands. How about these hands? Brooks, two punt returns for touchdowns. That'll save your fanny every single time. He has been the story in Manhattan in the first 30 minutes of play. It's been unbelievable. We talked about Kansas State ability to block kicks, but it's been all about the return game. Phillip Brooks single-handedly is winning this game. Welcome to the State Farm FS1 College Football Halftime Show. We're coming your way from inside the horseshoe here in Columbus. The big noon kickoff crew with you. Reggie Bush in that nice-looking blazer. Brady Quinn, Matt Leinart, Urban Meyer, Rob Stone here with you. Plenty of college football activity coming up on both Fox and FS1 today. On Fox at 3.30 Eastern, first place in the Big 12 on the line as 17th-ranked Iowa State. They head into Stillwater to take on the 6th-ranked Cowboys. Those teams, two of the three unbeat that remain in Big 12 play. It's also the first top 20 matchup between these two programs since 1976. The running games have been a focal point, and by all accounts, that should continue today. Without a doubt, these are two of the best running backs in college football. Let's start off with Brees Hall from Iowa State. Uh, really had to kind of carry this offense this season so far. Brock Purdy hasn't gone off to a great start. They've relied on the rushing attack, and it's been a lot of Brees Hall on the ground, finding production, finding consistency for this offense. And then the flip side, Oklahoma State, you know, they've had an injury at quarterback. Spencer Sanders was out. Younger quarterback steps in. They've relied on Chuba Hubbard to be able to carry the workload. And both these guys are averaging over 100 yards per game. The challenge for them is each of these defenses for Iowa State and Oklahoma State are in the top half of the Big 12, long less than 100 yards per game. So whoever wins that matchup, in my opinion, Reg, is largely going to win this game. Absolutely. And I can't wait to watch this matchup, man, between Brees Hall, who was my playmaker of the week a couple weeks ago, and then Chuba Hubbard, man. I've been on him all <laughs> season long. And one of the reasons why I love him is because he has a guy named Tylen Wallace yep. who is going to help take some of the pressure off of that run game. He's the guy that's going to be fearless. He's going to be the guy that goes across the middle and he's the guy that you can be able to put the ball up in the air and he's going to go get it. I love getting him involved 
early and often. To me, the game plan is simple. Hand the ball <laughs> off a lot of times to Chuba Hubbard and then let Tylen Wallace eat on the back end. Well, I'm going to talk about the tight ends. I know Tylen Wallace gets a lot of credit, but I want to talk about the use of the Iowa State tight ends guys going up against this Oklahoma State defense. It's really an interesting offense. They use multiple tight end sets almost 50% of the time. It's Charlie Kohler, Chase Allen, and Dylan Sainer all heavily involved in the run game. For As you mentioned, Brady, uh, blocking for Brees Hall, but you see these guys. This was a deuce slot formation, two tight ends to one side, slot to the other side, do a good job of getting off the line of scrimmage. They shift and motion these guys a lot. This is down in the red zone. Again, good push. Watch these blocks by both tight ends. Ooh. Opens up those lanes for Brees Hall. And then in the pass game, I can't tell you how many times on film where they shift, they motion. They've had all three tight ends in a bunch set before and then shift them back. And here's a little play action and then finding Chase Allen up the seam. Why is this a challenge and unique? Obviously because uh, Oklahoma, o Oklahoma State defensively, excuse me, they don't see this type of offense week in and week out in the Big 12. Keep an eye up on that matchup. Think about, we're talking about the champ, potential champion of the Big 12, <laughs> and I didn't hear one of you guys say Texas or Oklahoma. That's what great. a unique year. And the one thing I want to watch is Oklahoma State has a second-ranked defense in America, but reality is about to hit here in the next few weeks. The average offense they've raced is, uh, faced is 57th. Yeah. So things are about to get real. I'm not sure Iowa State's got a great offense, but you've got some great offenses coming down the road. Remember, Iowa State has beaten Oklahoma. Oklahoma State has not placed the big boys yet. Mm -hmm. First time in the history, Urban, of the Big 12, these are the two highest-ranked programs in the conference. Coming up on FS1, three more games, 3.30 Eastern. It's the Big Ten opener for eighth-ranked Penn State as they travel to Bloomington. Then it's a pair of Mountain West matchups. Welcome, Mountain West, to the Fox family. We have Utah State taking on Boise State. Then at 10.30 Eastern, Air Force, who already has a win against Navy this year, they are at San Jose State. Let's start in Bloomington, where the Hoosiers enter off their first winning year since 2007. But the talking point is Penn State, considered the number two team in the conference, the Nittany Lions. New offensive coordinator, but a familiar face under center. Yeah, Sean Clifford, I think he might be the single most important key for this Penn State football team because I think we all agree they are a possible playoff caliber football team. His development in his second year as a starter is going to be so crucial. Last year, he completed under 60% of his throws. He threw seven interceptions. So you want to see him improve as a passer and just make better decisions. We also know how valuable Brady he is in the run game, but he's going to do it without a lot of star power. K.J. Hamler is in the NFL. Journey Brown may be out for the season. He does have Fryermuth his tight end back, but he's going to have to elevate the players around him if Penn State wants to take that next step. And an inexperienced defense, too. Micah Parsons, he's gone. He opted out this season with four returning starters, so he's going to have to carry the load. And what about Indiana? Eight wins yeah. last year. I mean, it's almost like it was kind of a surprise to people, but they've got a lot of guys returning back. 16 total starters, nine on defense. I think Tom Allen's going to have that group going, but also their starting quarterback, Michael Penix. He can sling it in the air. He's athletic enough, too, to hurt you with his legs. Stevie Scott, their leading rusher from a year ago. Wop Fillier, Ty Fry, uh, Fogel, both leading wide receivers from a year ago, and their leading tight end. And that's a lot of continuity. Just watch out now if you're Penn State. I'm They're just saying. Good. You're, you're worried about that matchup coming up week two versus the Ohio State Buckeyes. Watch out. This might be that trap game for them mm. to start off the season. And last year, the Hoosiers' first winning season since 2007. Meanwhile, in Minneapolis, a high of 31 is anticipated. Slight chance snow could be on the field tonight for a meeting between two programs, Urban, who seem to be going in polar opposite direction yeah, college football and you guys know this as players is that college football is all about momentum the way you finish that season what do you do you go recruit then you get in the offseason you have two programs heading the opposite direction one beats auburn minnesota win their 11th game two get blown out or the ann arbor gets blown out by ohio state and alabama and that impacts your whole the whole offseason so i think this is a big a moment for the wolverine coaching staff to see how they can somehow get momentum back. I'm going to throw this on top of that. They've had 15 plus players transfer from the program. Wow. So this is going to be a new quarterback, yep. new offensive line. This will be a huge challenge for the coaching staff of the Wolverines. Yeah, and what are they going to look like going, to get, going up against this experienced Minnesota team? Uh, I think about Tanner Morgan yep. and Rashad Bateman. And that's all I want to hear from, them, from, from that game is those two. That QB 
receiver connection is going to be everything for the production of this offense. Uh, I know Tanner Morgan was excited when he heard Rashad <laughs> Bateman was coming yes, back he because was. that's his safety blanket, right? That's the guy he can put the football up in the air to, and he's going to go get it. And that's the guy that's going to get this team going early. So to me, again, the game plan is simple. Tanner Morgan, Rashad Bateman. That's all I want to hear. <laughs> don't, don't forget about Chris Ottman Bell. He can tote the rock on the outside as well. This is an experienced offensive line, so he's going to have good protection. The question becomes for Minnesota and Tanner Morgan, how do you take that next step? Yep. How do you continue to build from what you did last year? Mm -hmm. Continuity, a bunch of players coming back, that helps. Their defense, though, Matt, they don't yeah. have quite as many starters coming back. Lost a few guys to the NFL draft. That was a talented group. Is this going to be a shootout every week? It's, if that's the case, it's obviously hard to replicate what they did winning 11 games a season ago. Yeah, well, one of those guys was Antoine Winfield, who was a first-team All-American, a great player in the secondary. And all eyes are going to be on, for me, for Joe Milton, for Michigan's quarterback, probably the most talented quarterback Jim Harbaugh's had, 6'5", 6'6", big dude who can run, also has elite arm strength. How does he look in this offense when they lose a lot of their top receivers on the outside? Keep an eye on that matchup. Is he the quarterback that can take this offense to the next level? An entirely new offensive oh, yep. line. Coach uh, talked yeah. about it. I mean, yeah, I one thing about Milton, that. I stood right there, right next to him. That's a big-looking, good-looking dude now. Now can he put it all together? Absolutely. Great yeah. arm, great release, yeah. giant player, but he's got to perform. Talking about programs going in opposite directions, those 11 wins for Minnesota, most since 1904. For Michigan, they haven't won a Big Ten title since 2004. So that'll do it for all of us here in the Horseshoe. Make sure you enjoy the second half. Time in Manhattan, Kansas. What a wonderful play by Phillip Brooks. Tail end of the second quarter. K-State 34-7 is their lead here at the break. Hello, everyone. My name is Eric Collins. My partner is Ben Lieber and obviously Chris Kleiman, uh, second-year head coach for Kansas State, doing great work. But somewhere, Bill Snyder, Hall of Fame head coach, has to be smiling. Not offensive touchdowns continue to be a theme for Kansas State. Continues to be a theme. We talked about their ability to block kicks going into this game. But Kansas State, this decade, is the number one team in the country in non-offensive touchdowns. And Phillip Brooks got started off early in the first quarter with this punt return touchdown in this game. Early points on the board. Then later on, it's a pick six for Kansas State's defense as KU tries to set up the screen on the backside. And then once again, right before the end of the half, it's Brooks again on the right side. Some great blocking. He gets down the field as the clock hits zero. Brooks is in the end zone again. Take a look at these numbers. Good golly, this is like a month's worth of activity for your normal punt returner. Phillip Brooks, three returns, 147 yards with a pair of touchdowns. Leader in the clubhouse right now for Big 12 Special Teamer of the Week. <laughs> By himself, he is beating this Kansas Jayhawks team. We'll take a timeout. We come back. We'll be back to playing some football. It is the Sunflower Showdown in Manhattan, Kansas. minutes of action get ready for a third quarter of play it is a 34 7 lead k-state over kansas take a look at our first half stats sponsored by zaxby's hand breaded chicken and fresh ingredients made to order only at zaxby's take a look at those number total yards actually not that much of a difference at all you look at the scoreboard, everything has changed because of the offense, not offensive touchdowns. Yeah, the non-offensive touchdowns is really the, the key point of this game. You see the turnovers there by KU. That's a big issue as well. The one thing that we don't see on the screen is Kansas State's penalties. They committed seven penalties. We talked about it in the first quarter. They committed seven penalties in the first quarter. Second quarter, zero. So they claim that part up as well. K-State didn't have to play last week. Maybe a bit of rust. Um, but yes, Chris Kleiman made it clear that that was no longer to be acceptable and they did not have a penalty to speak of in the second quarter in which they outscored Kansas 27 to 7. All right, it will be Kansas State football to begin the third quarter. Will Howard, true freshman from Downington, Pennsylvania. Not a lot of uh, heroics for him, but he didn't turn the ball over. As the coaching staff likes to say, 
He grasps the why. He understands what's being asked of him and why he's being asked to do certain things. At this point in his career, maybe a game manager, but chance to be more than that with his physical tools. Look at Deuce Vaughn. Scoops through the first hole. Number across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Well, and this is exactly the position that K-State's offense and their team and overall put themselves in is to run the football in the second half. Given the lead that they have, you're going to see a lot more Deuce Vaughn in this game. You're going to see a lot more of, uh, of Harry Trotter in this game as well. And this is, you look back at KU's games, their defense gets worn out in the third quarter and into the fourth quarter because teams will just run the football on them. Game of 12 for Vaughn. Play action. And it's complete across the 50. Malik Knowles had a hard time hanging on to the football in the first half. Nice catch there with the diving effort. It's a pickup of eight. Malik Knowles needs to get a little bit of confidence out there catching the football. He dropped a touchdown in that second quarter. You're going to see him just on a quick little comeback. It's an easy route. It's an easy throw. He makes a nice little tough catch. But uh, he's a guy that's had two opportunities in the end zone to complete the catches, and he just failed. First catch of the afternoon for Knowles, third on the season. This is Trotter, and Trotter gets out close to the first down marker. And they'll give him forward progress, so a first down for Kansas State. When Trotter is the, uh, he's the thunder to Deuce Vaughn's lightning, and he's the bigger back. He's the guy that's going to be asked to run between the tackles a little bit more. He can bounce things to the outside, but doesn't have that true speed that, that Deuce Vaughn has. But again, in situations like this, where Kansas State's up 34 to 7, he's a good guy to lean on. Just getting started in our third quarter. Sebastian Taylor was silent in the first half. Taylor coming into this game with 10 catches in the first four games. That's his first grab. It's uh, worth nine yards for Kansas State. Junior from Giddings, Texas. Man, sure looks the part. 6'4", 223 pounds. Yeah, he's one of these guys that they just say he's just a grinder. I mean, he does everything that he is asked to do, plus more. He works at it every single day. Tremendous leader in that wide receiver room. It's Taylor made to play wide receiver at Kansas State. Second down and one. Play action. Howard wants a ball. They marked him down at the one. All the way down the one yard line, but a huge play for K State. This is an unbelievable exchange route deep in the field. He's going to run across the field, but he's got to wait for the other receiver on the other side to clear. You see that the clearing route there by Malik Knowles, and that ball's placed perfectly just on his upfield shoulder. He goes and makes a tough catch, and he's down, it looks like, oh, at the one I'd yard line. Touchdown. 30 years from now, you want that to be a touchdown. But it's a gain of 37. He needed 37 and two inches, obviously. First down and goal. Quickly to the line. Knocking at the door, already up by 27. Little pitch, Vaughn. Tough kick. Touchdown, Kansas State. And the beat continues for the Wildcats. They come out of the locker room in the third quarter with their hair on fire. Well, that's the way you come out of the locker room in the second half. Yes, you have a lead, but you want to see more out of your offense. You cannot let up on the gas pedal. They do a nice job of getting the ball on the outside with Will Howard throwing the football, get the ball deep like they talked about before the game started, taking some shots with success, and then to cap it all off, it's a quick little toss, little speed option toss to Deuce Vaughn, and he takes it in to four touchdown. Six plays, 69 yards, two minutes and 41 seconds come off the clock. And it's more to like if you're a K-State fan. And here's the big play that gets them all the way down to the one-yard line. Chabaston Taylor down to the one. And then Deuce Vaughn takes it in from there. The deuce is loose indeed. True freshman tailback. Deuce Vaughn has been the goods this afternoon. Short kickoff. And it'll be fair caught. 
Take a look at the Rocket Mortgage built for success, and we're going to continue with that theme about building around Deuce Vaughn. Yeah, he's a good guy to build around. He can run tough through the tackles, showing that he's got the speed and toughness in there, and then watch all the little cuts that he makes with his footwork. So quick, so powerful with every movement, and then you can get him out on the edge as well. He's a dynamic receiver, all those same attributes run the football, even as a receiver. That's the last touchdown there. I tell you what, he has the ability to be the one of the very best in the nation, especially in the Big 12. You got Chuba Hubbard there at, at Okie State. You got Brees Hall at Iowa State. He's got a good one here at K-State. And the ball is tipped at the line. It'll go incomplete. Jalen Daniels, true freshman quarterback, beginning the second half. Didn't play at all a week ago in the loss in Morgantown against West Virginia. But now we're placing Miles Kendrick as the starting quarterback for the foreseeable future. Had some real bright spots in the first half. Had that one touchdown drive at the end of the second quarter. Also had some things he'd like to do over again, but young player. Mentioned he's only 17 years of age. Mason Fairchild. Second catch for Fairchild, the sophomore tight end. Well, and there was a lot to build off of for Jalen Daniels at the end of that, that first half. You know, they went on that scoring draft, nine plays, 75 yards, and he got the touchdown. So there's still a lot to build off. Good confidence-building thing for him at the end of that first half. Delton Gardner. And remember, this is the first game that Kansas is playing without Cooper Williams. Cooper Williams is such a dynamic player for two and a half years in Lawrence with the Jayhawks opting out the rest of the season. And they're just trying to figure out where the offense is going to come from. Les Miles didn't see him that worried. He's a big believer in Belt Gardner. But we shall see. Second and eight. Second down and nine. Intended for parchment. Well, and see, those are the throws that he, he can't miss on. You know, that's an easy just little stop route on the outside. The defense was going to give him those yards. They're playing off coverage right now with the secondary. So those little stop routes are going to be there all day long. Now, it's, it's a little bit of a longer throw, but he's got to get that up off the turf and give his receiver a chance to make a play. Kansas having punting issues, just having healthy bodies able to punt the football away, and then stopping big returns. You'd imagine they want to stay on the field right now in third and long. And it's a drop. Looking for Gardner, had it, and then had it poked away. It'll be fourth down and nine, and you have to punt the football, you'd imagine. Well, you got to punt the football here, but what a play by Justin Gardner. He's the guy that had the pick six in the second quarter. K-State brings a blitz, so there's not a lot of guys in coverage, and, they, and those guys have to play with vision with that particular blitz. Gardner sees it, saw the action by the quarterback, made a great break on the ball to break that up. Phillip Brooks licking his chops right now. Reese Vernon, second punt for the freshman. And there's obviously been an edict. Keep the ball away from Brooks. So, timeout on the field. Kansas State already a touchdown here in the third quarter. They've got the ball back. Welcome back, everyone. Big 12 football. Manhattan, Kansas. So far, so good for Will Howard and the K-State Wildcats. We have more Big 12 football coming your way. A couple of ranked teams. you got Iowa State and Oklahoma State. 3.30 Eastern time is your kick for that one on FS1. Chuba Hubbard doing work. Get out of Edmonton. Chuba Hubbard doing work. Brees Hall mentioned him earlier doing work for Iowa State. This is going to be a fantastic football game. Oki State's defense is legit. Deuce Howard between the tackles. Crosses over the 30-yard line. Let's sink our teeth into what's going on uh, in the Big 12. Take a look at the standings. You got the three unbeatens remaining in conference play. You got the Cyclones, uh, you got the Cowboys, and you got this Kansas State Wildcat team as well, trying to go step for step. Yeah, Kansas State's right in there. We obviously got the big tilt with the Cyclones and the Cowboys, and you know, Oklahoma State and Baylor had a game canceled, so that's why there's only two games apiece for those guys. But big time implications in the Big 12 with the game this afternoon. 
I'm impressed at the commitment to run Deuce Vaughn between the tackles. You would think a guy like that, you know, let's get him on the edges, let's get him out in space. But that's two consecutive runs where they had just said, you know what, may the best man win. Well, they do talk about just his stature and his shiftiness. They said he, he rarely takes a clean hit, whether that's in the tackles or out in open space, because at the last second, he can kind of shift his hips, turn his shoulders a little bit. So he never really takes hard, direct hits. First out of 10. Again, straight up the gut, and this time he is tripped up as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Nice defensive play. Marcus Harris, first time we called his name. Redshirt freshman defensive end from Montgomery, Alabama. That's a loss of one. Curious, Ben, you were a tenacious, hard-hitting linebacker in your playing days. If you had faced someone like Deuce Vaughn, what would be your thought process of how to stay in front of him and bring him down? <laughs> Corral him and wait for the rest of the defense to come and tackle him. <laughs> you, know? you never really want to get in a wide open space with those guys, uh, especially in the pass game just like that. I know that's not Deuce Vaughn, but DJ Render goes down the seam for a big play. But yeah, as a, as a linebacker going against those shifty guys, yeah, you, you do what you can to keep your shoulders square, keep your feet moving. You don't want to stop your feet. He's not the feed. They're going to see that and run right around him. More of the same for Kansas State. They're up by 34 points, and they want more, clearly. He just runs right now for Kansas State. They didn't play a week ago, and because of this unique nature of the season, you know, certain guys have gotten reps on the year. Other guys have not. So this is all just so valuable, getting a chance to play. Wow, look at the Just dead leg action, a pickup of 24. Uh, I hate to laugh, but you're going to see Deuce right there. He's he's on the right side. Of the, now watch this move right there. Oh. <laughs> oh, I talked about not stopping your feet on defense, but you also have to keep your feet in the ground. You can't cross over like that. You got to just shuffle. Sometimes, even, even if you hit the tackle, just shuffle your feet, just like a basketball shuffle, just to pin him in there. He's replaced by Trotter. Designed run. To the end zone. It is incomplete. Looking for the tight end, Briley Moore. And we have a flag down. Looks like they're going to call Denzel Feaster on a defensive pass interference. At least that's what the body language looks like at the flag thrown at the end of that play. Personal foul, or correction, pass interference, defense, ball well, pass. The foul occurred in the end zone by rule the ball be placed at the two yard line, automatic first down. Mm. Yeah, those are always tough throws. And then this happened, this happened last week to KU several times on some balls that were slightly underthrown where the defenders put themselves in a good position. They just don't turn around quick enough to make a play on the football. And that's exactly what happened there to Denzel Feaster. So the ball gets placed at the two-yard line. Point blank range once again for K-State. Trying to back his way in. Trotter, no signal. And he stopped at the half-yard line. Yeah, you're right about that. He got into the line there and just kind of got turned around, so he just started pushing with his back against the pile. And, yes, he ends up into the end zone, but stopped about a half a yard short. Fullback is into the game now. Mason Barta. So maybe some power football. Barta lines up in front of Trotter. Trotter probing, finds the end zone. Touchdown, K-State. Second score of the quarter. Well, it didn't take much to get into the end zone, but he barely gets into the end zone. It's a good little stalemate there by KU's defensive front. Kyron Johnson meets him in the hole and he just gets the tip of that ball across the white stripe. Extra point is true. And it is now a 41-point lead 
for K-State. Pretty nice day for Harry Trotter, native Kansan from Atchison. Senior with a touchdown capping off a seven play drive. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Rocket Mortgage. Bill Snyder Family Stadium in Manhattan, Kansas. It has been all K-State, a 28-0 run. 2-16 remaining in the second quarter. It was a 20-7 game, but ever since then, K-State has been flexing their muscles. Touchback ball will be taken out to the 25-yard line. Tonight on Fox, it is game four of the World Series. Mookie Betts, Cody Bellinger, the Dodgers, looking to go up three games to one on the Rays. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Yeah, you didn't watch that game last night, did you? You know, Kansas State number I was knee-deep in the Sunflower Showdown. Kansas State number one now wearing number eight. Trying to find out every detail I could possibly find out about uh, Jalen Daniels and what to expect out of Les Miles' bunch. Some positives in the first half, but they need to figure things out here in the third quarter. They have been blitzed. Already two touchdowns scored by K-State here in the third quarter. All right, Jalen Daniels, again, out of that shotgun. Daniel Highshaw next to him, and they hand it off to Highshaw. Trying to high jump. Out to the 30-yard line, he has brought down Jerron McPherson with the tackle. I show one of those true freshmen. He is from Moore, Oklahoma. And he looks like he may have uh, taken a hit where he didn't want to. Yeah, well, he when he jumped up in the air, he left his, his midsection sort of exposed there and took a nice little shot. Looks like he's just trying to regain his breath. He's replaced by Gardner. Luke Krim gets some playing time. Bottom of your screen in the slot, number 80, a true freshman speedster. Gardner, best run of the day. He's got a chance across the 50, and he steps out of bounds. Wow, the Cavalry is closing in on him, but he still had some green in front of him, and he unfortunately stepped out of bounds. Boy, just take a look at the block on the left side here. He's going to take this ball and just go right through there. It's going to be a huge wide gap, and he doesn't have to really make a play until right there when he runs away from the safety. He just gets oh, too much of an angle to the outside. He can't turn that thing back north and south. Back-to-back -back carries for Gardner. He was given 27 yards on that carry prior to that. His previous long carry was eight yards. Now for 46 yards in the game, 11 rushes. As we've made it through the halfway point of our third quarter. Second down and seven. Big ball. And incomplete, looking for Parchman. Was that a poor pass or miscommunication? Well, to me, it was it was just the wrong read. You know, Parchment seemed to be the primary receiver, but sometimes in those situations, if they're going to be covered up, then the guy that was the decoy can be the primary receiver. In that particular case, he had a wide open receiver on the left hash. If he just would have taken his eyes off of the safety and off his primary target, possibly had a touchdown. So it's third down and seven. It got to the point on the field where, with a couple of punters down, you may start thinking it's four-down territory. Daniels, incomplete. He was looking for Naylor. And it's fourth down and seven decision time for Kansas. Well, I've been awfully impressed with this Kansas State secondary. Obviously, we got the pick six from Justin Gardner, but they've been contesting a lot of footballs down the field. This time, it's Keandre Thomas, the guy that's been injured, the transfer from Minnesota. And here, KU goes for it on fourth and seven. Mm, kind of in no man's land. On oh, the kicker, or the quarterback, will pooch kick. He's got some skill. That was brilliant. That was really good. Good kick. Out of bounds at the five-yard line. Jalen Daniels showing off his multifaceted skill set. Timeout on the field. K-State again with the football.
Kansas State trying to get to 4 and 0 in conference play. They have run off a 28 to nothing run over Kansas. They have had the football twice in the third quarter and had touchdown drives on both occasions. But they'll start this time inside the 10 at the 6 yard line. And that's going to be the first catch of the day for Spencer Rowe. First catch of the season for the sophomore fullback. Well, and wisely, Kansas State up against their own end zone. Normally a running type situation, but that ball has to come out quick if you're going to throw the football, and that's what they did right there with Will Howard. I apologize. That was Tyler Burns with the catch, his first catch of the day. Burns deep. He's the tailback for placing Deuce Vaughn, at least for the beginning of this drive. Straight up the gut. It'll bring up third down. And so far, Kansas State, a six-play, 69-yard touchdown drive and a seven-play, 71-yard touchdown drive here in the third quarter. Well, that's, and that's the way to come out in the second half, even though you have a nice, comfortable lead to just keeping, uh, keeping the aggressiveness going and really working on just Will Howard reading defenses and trying to place the ball exactly where it needs to be. Bill Brooks goes in motion. Pitch and catch, and it is complete. It is Chabaston Taylor with another grab. Well, the thing you like about that pass play there, that's really the few times in this game where Howard has had to have the time in the pocket to really go through his progressions and then come back and find Taylor wide open. So, yes, you need the protection, but you also have to work on you one, two, three, check, and then maybe I can go back to one of my primary receivers. All of a sudden, Howard's got a pretty good line. 13 for 20, 206 yards, doesn't have a turnover. Back to Taylor. Fourth catch of the afternoon. Open field tackle made to perfection by Kyle Mayberry. Mayberry's got a younger brother who's also a quarterback on the roster. Deuce Mayberry, interesting note. Deuce Mayberry, where's number 22? Uh, there are two deuces in today's game, one for both sides, who both wear number 22, double deuces. And they spell their names a little bit differently. D-E-U-C-E, -E, <laughs> D-U-E-C-E. -E. Uh, That's it was, why I wasn't watching the World Series. I thought it was a typo when I was making my boards. <laughs> this is a Keon Mosey, and Mosey can fly. He's got a chance. Mosey pushed out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Mosey may be the fastest Kansas State Wildcat. He was scooting down that sideline. Well, and it was just about patience for him just to wait for the holes to open. He's going to take this thing, and he's going to bounce it all the way around because he's going to wait for his blockers. And again, he's kind of a smaller guy, so kind of hard to pick up. But look at all the purple jerseys on the white jerseys. And look at all the way down the field. Malik Knowles had a couple drops today, but still finding value in his play by blocking downfield. And Mosey... Does it mosey along? He can scoot. World-class speed for Keon Mosey. Play action. Howard tucks and runs. And a gain of five on first down. Just curious, big picture out of you, Ben, as a former linebacker. When you played a true freshman quarterback, did you like it when your defensive coordinator said, you know what, we're going to test the young quarterback and make him make mistakes, or we're going to play back and allow him to make mistakes? So just wait for the mistake. What was your thought process defensively? <laughs> Honestly, it didn't matter if it was a veteran quarterback back there or a freshman quarterback with very little experience. We wanted to pressure. <laughs> you, you want to blitz. You want to pressure. You want to find any way that you can get some hits or sacks from the quarterback. That didn't matter. Just stay aggressive on defense. That was our philosophy. Come out of the backfield, Mason Barta, the fullback, has the first down. Barta from Holton, Kansas. The junior has the first down, and the chains will move. You know, all of the stuff that Kansas State's been doing in the second half is just really, you know, more things to think about if you're an opposing team getting ready for this offense. You know, at first it was just like, okay, we just have to stop Deuce Vaughn. Well, yes, you have to do that. But also now you get Sammy Wheeler, the tight end in the game, along with Briley Moore. Shabaston Taylor, he's their big threat on the outside. They still throw the ball to Malik Knowles. And now you're getting some of these younger guys, even fullbacks, in the passing game. Mosey, no chance at all. Wrapped up in the backfield, Sam Burt, along with Marcus Harris. And it's a loss of three, second down and 13. We've had nine different receivers 
catch a football today for Kansas State. So 15 completions for Will Howard to nine different players. Well, and that's the way that not only just spreading the ball out is important, but in just the, the fashion that they're doing it. Some of it's down the field. Some of it's just little swing routes. You know, that, that little pass to the, in, to the fullback in the flat, that's an easy throw. But again, it gives the defense something to chew on more than just the main guys. Quarterback keeper. And Howard dives to the 21-yard line. It'll bring up third down and short. Third down and three after the gain of nine for Howard. He's an effective runner. Well, and Courtney Messingham, the offensive coordinator for Kansas State, not, he's not deviating from his play calls at all right now, even with the nice lead that he's got his young freshman that, yeah, I don't need to protect him right now. We're, we're going to still ask him to run with the football. He needs to take some shots and, uh, and feel this game. Tenth play of the drive for K-State. Wow, bullet pass right on the money to the tight end, Briley Moore. First down. I'm going forward. Oh, Briley Moore upset. The fact that the play was blown dead. Did you hear me? I was going forward, pleading with the referees. Like, don't blow the whistle so early. He still thought he had a chance to pick up some more yards. Now, this catch that you talk about, he just slings this thing, and it was like a magnet right into his chest. Didn't have to use his fingers and hands to catch the ball because it was placed right on the numbers to the big tight end. Mosey, they put him in motion to the right side of Howard. Fake it to Mosey. And there's the touchdown that Briley Moore wanted. Little pitch and catch couldn't have been any easier. Howard finds Moore, and it's another touchdown for K-State. Well, it was a blitz by Kansas's defense off the edge, and sometimes you leave your secondary vulnerable to throws like this. They recognize the blitz coming off the left side of the offense, and then you're going to get Briley Moore, who's lined up right there in that D area, just a free release to the outside, and because of where he was lined up versus the blitz that was called, he was unaccounted for in coverage. First time that Briley Moore has played in the Sunflower Showdown. It's been his first two years as a college player at Northern Iowa. He's going to be right there in that D area. And then he's just going to sneak out this way on which is going to basically be a wheel route that we normally see out of running backs. And because of the blitz again, it puts the, the coverage in a little bit of a compromised, conflicted situation. And he's right there in the front of the end zone, wide open. You know, Ben Lieber, something that we've seen all season long out of Kansas. Uh, they're just getting hammered and hammered and hammered in the second half. They seem to wear down defensively. That is now the third extended touchdown drive in this third quarter that Kansas State has put Kansas on State the Kansas Jayhawks. A six-play touchdown, eight, drive, eight, a seven play touchdown drive, a seven-play touchdown drive, and that's an 11-play, 94-yard touchdown drive. Yeah, and we and we talked to DJ Elliott, the defensive coordinator there at KU, and he said, listen, guys, our defense has been on the field for 90 snaps the last two games. He's like, I, I, I can ask a, a lot out of my guys, but 90 snaps the last two games, it's really hard for these guys to recover during the course of the week and then go out and play another game when they could possibly get another 80 to 90 snaps in the next game. Well, there was no winner last week, so this Sunday, Fox Bet Super 6 is giving you another chance at $1 million. You can play for free right now, so download the Fox Bet Super 6 app and make your picks for Sunday's games for a shot at $1 million. Now wearing number 8. Kansas State number 1, now wearing number 8. Final minute of our third quarter. That's called the Wabash Cannonball, all right? That's correct. Another reason why I didn't watch the World Series last night. Trying to get up to speed with all the traditions in Manhattan. Uh, even, even with a small crowd of attendants, they're still doing their thing. Here comes Gardner, right side. And he is stripped up. Amaris Brown, true freshman cornerback, getting some playing time with the score as it is. And he makes the open field tackle. We saw Brown make a special tackle on a kickoff earlier. Well, this is the point of the game where both offense and defense, really maybe for both teams, you're going to start to see a lot of the reserves and kind of dig into your depth chart. Gardner at second with five. He's going to be short of the line to gain. It'll bring up third down. 
know, that's one area as we see the clock kind of winding down here in the third quarter that, you know, Gardner had to come in. Obviously, they, they have to find a new guy that's going to be the bell cow because of Puka Williams leaving the team. But I've noticed in this game, he's doing a lot of dancing at the line of scrimmage. He needs to, to see it and just to hit it. And that's going to be it for the third quarter here in Manhattan, that's Kansas. That's the the third quarter. Kansas State, Timeout. big, big lead on KU. And we'll come back. Kansas State, the third quarter belonged to them. Now they've got four fingers in the air. 21-0 blitzing Kansas State over Kansas in the third quarter. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Rocket Mortgage. We have made it to quarter number four. It has been all K-State. Somewhat of a game back in the first half. But a 21-0 run by K-State in the third quarter. They've opened up a 55-7 lead. Yeah, and what was just a, a game dominated by defense and special teams for K-State, the offense really came back in the, in the second half. It's really been uh, the reason why they put all those points on the board, throwing the football around, still staying aggressive against this Kansas defense. On third down and two, looking for the big play, a flag comes down, and that's going to be against Kansas State. And that's a big deal because Kansas didn't want to punt the football away. Anything to keep a, that offense on the field. We have possibly another pass interference here. Denson wears number eight. He's getting some playing time. Wasn't listed on the two deep at the beginning of the game. He's a freshman from Atlanta. Pass interference. Offense, number four. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is an incomplete pass. Brings up fourth down. Wow. So they actually call it on the senior parchment who was battling with the freshman Denson. But because the penalty is declined, I'm assuming Kansas is going to go for it. Fourth down and two. Well, they are in punt formation, and uh, I would wisely kind of do what they keep doing, is kicking the ball away from Phillip Brooks. It's a surprise to me. They're punting the football. Reese Vernon, he was the third punter at the beginning of the day. And he's gotten all the action here in the second half. Here comes Brooks. He's already scored two touchdowns on punt returns. To have this ball be a right punt out of bounds towards the sidelines, it looks like a missed kick to me. Again, a right return setup, and just so impressive with how well they block down the field. You see all the purple jerseys engaged with guys well before 10, 15 yards before Phillip Brooks even gets there, allows him to use his vision and find some lanes. And boy, oh boy, he wanted that third touchdown so bad. Lieber. You heard of a guy named David Allen? Played with David Allen. David Allen just got taken out of the history books. Uh, Philip Brooks has already scored two punt returns in the game. He has just set a single game record for punt return yardage, erasing a mark set by David Allen back in 1998. And David Allen was an All-American. <laughs> Philip Brooks keeps having days like this. He will be an All-American this season as well. That is his fourth punt return of over 40 yards in the game. You know, we talked about this earlier in the game, and I, and I just think this is so important to remember that K-State is, is bucking the trend of having no special teams coordinator. I mean, everybody thinks that you have to have a designated coordinator for every one of the three phases, and they said, you know what? You know, we're going to ask our guys to double dip a little bit as far as their coaching duties and work on the special teams and what that allows them to do. When those coaches are in those meetings with all of the players and special teams, you can no longer sort of hide from your position coach. Those position coaches know and understand Understand how important special teams are and to have those guys in those meeting rooms only as a player offense, you have to give 100 percent effort not only on offense or defense but on special teams down. as well clearly working for chris Kleiman's bunch uh, we should tell you there's a new quarterback in the game so will howard true freshman he is done nick aust is the quarterback 
He is a junior, looks the part, 6'5", 219, from Cimarron, Kansas. Yeah, and we talked to Coach Kleiman just like how he went through the process of the bye week. He said it was very physical. You know, they they asked a lot of guys to go out there and, and bang some heads and get some necessary reps in. But he said, you know, we got our quarterbacks in a lot of reps as well. You know, all three of our, our quarterbacks, as we see Sammy Wheeler, the tight end, uh, we mentioned earlier this game, was taking a shot low at his knees. Good to see him get up. But he's like, it was important for us to get Jaron Lewis, Nick Austin, Will Howard all ready to go and get some reps during the bye week. Third down and 18. Kansas State has scored a touchdown every time they've touched the football here in the second half. First series for Nick Ost. And put behind the chains when there was a hold on the left tackle. at the last moment by Ricky Thomas. So Ricky Thomas continues to play. And it's fourth down and 18. And for the first time in the second half, Kansas State will punt the football. Well, nice protection there. Only a three-man rush. KU's defense elects to have eight guys in coverage in the back end. And I think a little bit of a miscommunication, a misunderstanding as far as the routes go because two receivers are in the general vicinity making it an easy uh, pass break up there for the defense. Kwame Lasseter had a pivotal muffed punt back in the first half. Stays away from that one. Kansas Jayhawk football when we return to Manhattan. Moments of protection brought to you by Allstate. Get better protected with Allstate. You've never been in better hands. And the hands of Phillip Brooks has been weird. K-State has wanted the football. He has had four returns of punts. Twice he's taken it to the house. Every single time he has had at least 40 yards on the return. But it's been impressive to watch him run, obviously. But you've got to give credit to the guys blocking for him. Those guys are doing a tremendous job of blocking downfield, setting everything up. And he's using that vision and speed and athleticism to have a career day. I've got some good buddies who saw him play in high school. He's from Lee's Summit, Missouri, and they swear in a stack of Bibles he was a better baseball player growing up than he was a football player, but he just loved football, and no one could ever convince him to commit to baseball full-time. His father's a lawyer, comes from just a phenomenal family, but he is so gifted, and we're seeing it what he's doing with special teams. Gardner tries the right side, gets to the edge and has the first down. This is still important work for Jalen Daniel. True freshman quarterback playing his final game as a 17-year-old. He'll turn 18 middle of this week. He's getting a chance to get reps. And even when you're down 55 to 7, I'd imagine this still counts as a quality rep. Oh, it, it, it all counts. I mean, he, he's got to feel every moment of this game and keep his head into it. Because as a quarterback, you're constantly evaluating every down and distance in every situation. That mental gymnastics has to be gone through, even if you're in a game where it's 55 to step to seven. Stay in it. Think about, okay, what's the play call? What do I need to do? What's the Rolodex of responsibilities that I have to go through? What am I checking? What's the defense look like? All of that stuff is going to help, even though that this game is out of hand. They, they are not going to come back and win this football game, but he can still get quality, quality reps, when it comes, especially when it comes to some of the mental stuff he's got to go through. Uh, escaped pressure for a moment, but then got dragged down from behind. Spencer Trussell, sophomore from Arlington, Texas, with the tackle, and it's third down at seven. Well, again, they, they are Kansas right now. They're still trying to run the football. They, they ran the football in the play before. K-State's defense did a good job of just stringing that thing out. And again, we've seen this many times. It's third and seven, third and eight. They just haven't taken care of the football and gained enough yards in first and second down to have manageable third downs. Lasseter was open over the middle, but the pass is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. It's fourth down, and the punt team will come on, and that means that Phillip Brooks will come on to return the punt for Kansas State. Well, whatever they can to do to get this kick away from Phillip Brooks, I don't care if it goes 25 yards. Get that thing out of bounds. 
both school records, punt return yardage for a game, and total touchdowns on punt returns in a game. What an afternoon. Just a sophomore. I say you give him another chance. Oh, this is returnable. Oh, he calls for the fair catch. Come on, Phillip. You had an opportunity right there. You disappointed us. All right. Resting on his laurels. Timeout. We'll be back. 11.08 remaining. Fourth quarter. Now, this is uh, what is on the line. It's the Governor's Cup. Uh, it has been in possession of Kansas State for the last 11 years. And this entire week, it was right there, smack dab in the middle of the locker room, making sure that every K-State Wildcat understood that that's where it needed to stay. And they needed to have a good effort against Kansas this afternoon. Yeah, I love that little extra bit of motivation. I mean, obviously, these guys know and understand um, what this game means for both programs and both schools. But to have that little thing in the locker room, that shiny trophy, every time you walk past him, like, oh yeah, that that sucker's gonna stay here. You, of course, have Ben Lieber played for for Bill Snyder. Uh, was this always something that he circled on the calendar? Was this a game where he put extra emphasis in the practice leading up to it? Well, for sure. You know, the the, the funny thing about Coach Snyder is like he was never one to like really verbally put a lot of stuff on one game or the other. You know, even when we're playing Nebraska, he's like, all right, these are just uh, these are the, the team that we have to play this week, and we see Coach Snyder there. Um, you know, so I know it meant a lot to him, but he tried to keep us as even keel as possible, like attack every opponent as if it is the biggest game. And, uh, you know, for a lot of my buddies that grew up in Kansas, it was a huge game for them. And the whistle doesn't blow. They make it uh, official. Aust is brought to the ground by Kyron Johnson. Normally you see a whistle before the quarterback goes down in a heap. Uh, but it's a play on, and it's now third down and 20. Well, maybe maybe Briley Moore, when he was saying, hey, I was still going <laughs> forward, maybe maybe he swayed the officials there to make sure that they swallowed their whistles just for a little bit. That's the first sack of the afternoon for the Kansas Jayhawks. Jayhawks coming up a game in which you know, they gave up a whole bunch of points against West Virginia, but they were happy with the effort that they played with. And they had a bunch of tackles for losses and passes broken up last week uh, in Morgantown. They haven't had the same verb, the same energy this afternoon start. against their rival. Offense, number 70, five-yard penalty, still third down. How is it possible that Joel Klatt's in two places at the same time? I know. Doesn't that look like an older <laughs> Joel Klatt? <laughs> the same thing. Uh, you know, the way that the, the week or the last 10 days that Joe Buck has had between the World Series and all of his football duties, it would not surprise me if Joel Klatt was calling. He was the referee for this game and then calling a the game later on today. Yeah, Joel's a renaissance man. He could be in Columbus, Ohio, and Manhattan, Kansas at the same time. Lost. A lot of green in front of him on third down and 25. Fights out to the 40. And a flag is down on the field. Holding offense, number 70. That penalty's declined. Result of the play brings out fourth down. That's Katori Leviston, the left tackle. He actually had a false start on the play before and knocked him back to third and 25. And then on the quarterback scramble, he gets a holding call. So not, not a real good series there for number 70, 11, number 70, 70 Leviston. Lassiter skips backward and lets it fall at the 10-yard line, and that's where the ball will be spotted. And 8.49 remaining in the game. We'll be back to the Little Apple, Manhattan, Kansas, in just a moment. Chris Kleiman and Case Team about to go to 4-0 in conference play. This is what they have upcoming. Yeah, you take a look at this schedule, and thank goodness they have this bye week. they got to go to West Virginia next week. West Virginia beat them uh, last year, and I tell you what, they are really, really strong at home. Oklahoma State, we talked about the Oklahoma State-Iowa State game. Oklahoma State has got a lot of playmakers, and they get that much-needed bye week. And then it's Iowa State and Farmageddon taking place in Ames, Iowa. We're going to get a chance to see uh, Iowa State next week and see what they're all about. Iowa State has uh, got first things first 
They've got a game coming up against Oklahoma State in uh, just a matter of moments. And Spencer Sanders for Oklahoma State sounds like he is going to play and the quarterback has been out. So you get a, a healthy starting quarterback, QB1. You get a healthy Chuba Hubbard. It's going to be a great game. Kansas is still playing with all of their number ones right now. You still see Jalen Daniels. Uh, you got Melton Gardner. The offensive line, for the most part, has remained the same. They're just trying to get something going, trying to get any form of rhythm. They're going to have to take on Iowa State next week, and they need to figure out some things right now. Third and nine. Rocket shot is caught. Nice play. Good throw. And Naylor with the reception. Naylor had a whole bunch of nothing coming into today's game. That's his second catch here in the second half. Well, and that was a good, strong throw to the outside that had to have some velocity on it. On it. Obviously, the accuracy had to be there. And we saw that at, at the end of the first half. The ball is really kind of flying out of his hands, playing with a lot of zip. That's the first ball really in the second half that I thought he had that same sort of velocity that he had at the end of the first half. Tried to get the dead leg, and it didn't work nearly as well as when Deuce Vaughn does. It'll bring up second down. Well, there's no way that you can compare him to Deuce Vaughn. <laughs> uh, Deuce Vaughn is shaped to be pretty special. His footwork, his explosion. Um, Jalen Daniels athletic, not quite that athletic. Another first down for Kansas. Clock will stop temporarily as they move the chain. That's Stephen McBride. Second catch for the true freshman on the season. He is a native of Louisiana. You're starting to notice when you take a look at the roster uh, for Kansas because of the influence, obviously, of Les Miles and a lot of guys who came with him from LSU out to Lawrence. Uh, they know how to recruit, recruit the state of Louisiana. Yeah, they really do. And just in general, they've, they've opted to go with a lot of true high school freshmen. You know, not really got into the JUCO ranks as much to kind of build their roster. They really want to build it with youth, develop those guys. And so there's just a lot of youth on their offensive line, some guys at the receiver core, and especially on defense, on that defensive front. You're seeing a lot of guys with inexperienced young guys that are getting, uh, you know, necessary reps to grow. I always think that's interesting when you have a Kansas or a Kansas State deciding to not go the JUCO route. As you know, uh, the Jayhawk League and JUCO oh, yeah. football in Kansas is, is a huge deal. It's maybe the best junior college football in the country. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know where it's at right now. I know that uh, when I was at Kansas State, it was regarded as the best junior college conference in the country. I know it's still probably up there, but you know, Bill Snyder, that's that was his deal. That was his M.O. for building the team was, yes, I'm going to develop guys when they get here, but I want to go out and find some playmakers that can come in right now from the JUCO ranks and help us out. And, um, you know, he was he was the one that sort of set the, the benchmark for how to build these teams. Work. Closing in on the six-minute mark of our fourth quarter. And the tackle is made. It's going to be a sack. And it's going to bring up third down. Well, you get these young guys for Kansas State in the game as well. They want to make some plays. I mean, this is... For a lot of these guys, they may not get another, another opportunity late in the game, especially against your rival, to go out and make plays and, and to get some game reps. So no matter where you're, you're at in this game, if you're on the field, you have to be given 110%. Tyrone Teleni with the sack. That's now three sacks for K-State. Third down and 16. Tristan go lightly. No relation to Holly. Unable to make that play. Go lightly is from Mesquite, Texas. Getting some offensive snaps for the first time. Now these games are really different in 2020 because of the pandemic, because of the way that college football season has been impacted like the rest of the world. Um, rosters, two deeps depth charts, everything has been thrown out of whack. And you just really don't know who is available and who's going to be out there at a moment's notice just because it's such a revolving door from week to week. Yeah, we talked to DJ Elliott, the D coordinator for Kansas, directly about that. He, says, he goes, man, people just don't understand how tough this is as a coaching staff because we don't even know sometimes who's going to be available for games. You know, we've had situations where we've had 
penalty is declined. The result of the play brings up fourth down. Where they've had, they've gone into the game or they're getting on a bus or getting on a plane and they're finding out, oh, yes, yeah, so-and-so, he's not going to make the trip. And you're like, oh, well, I've got to go down to my depth chart. I didn't get this guy the necessary reps in practice. So they've learned now. They've adapted and changed their practice habits where normally it was 70% of the ones will get all the reps. And then now they've gone to a 50-50 where ones and twos are getting equal amount of reps just because you don't know who's going to be available for these games. Fair catch is made. So that's now two consecutive fair catches by Philip Brooks. Well, we're winding down here. 4.57 remaining in Manhattan. Will Howard, we didn't talk uh, really enough about how well he played. 17 for 24 with 242 yards, two touchdowns, didn't turn it over. That's going to win you a lot of games. Uh, if you're Chris Feynman, that's standard issue. You'll take that every single Saturday. Or you'll take that efficiency and those yards and the touchdowns. Like you said, the not turning the ball over was huge. You know, and a lot of these yards really came in the second half. The first half was really not about him. It really wasn't about the offense. I didn't think the offense was overly impressive in that first half. It was more about Philip Brooks in the return game, fumble on the field. And Kansas has it, they say, on the 15-yard line. Rolling on the field is a fumble recovered by Kansas. First down. Deuce Mayberry. One of two deuces in the game. They both were at number 22. He comes up with a loose ball. Well, it's just going to be a helmet right on the football right there. And even though that thing is kind of tucked away and you feel like that, that ball is high and tight, sometimes when these, these impacts, you're just not quite ready for them, especially when it's, a, it's an impact by two different players at the same time. And they do a nice job of just putting their shoulder pad right on that football and knocking that ball out. First fumble lost on the season. This is game five for K-State. Jalen Daniels still in the game. He has taken every snap as the quarterback. Throws a dart, and it's incomplete looking for Ezra Naylor. Hey, one last thought on the true freshman quarterback for Kansas State. Uh, Will Howard finished strong and then some. He completed his last 11 passing attempts. Yeah, and like I said, to finish that thought, like you're saying, you know, the first half, not so good. They came out in the second half, and they were Pass had a nice mix. Defense, number eight, ball will be placed at the spot of the foul, and an automatic first down. A nice mix of running the football and passing the football down the field. They took some shots early in the game without success. They came back, stayed aggressive in the second half, and connected on those, and you could just see his confidence building in that third quarter. Pass interference puts the ball at the four-yard line. Fake to Gardner. Daniels to the edge. Touchdown. Late touchdown, Jalen Daniels. So the turnover results in six with an extra point pending. Well, there's one thing about Daniels that you don't have to question is his toughness. You watch some of the games, he's taken some shots playing in the Big 12, and he's going to sacrifice his body whenever he has to to get the ball in the end zone. And again, these are learning moments for him. Late in this game, not much to play for, but you're still playing for pride. You're still out there showing your, your teammates you're not going to give up. Four thirty-eight remaining in the fourth quarter. Kansas State's going to get the ball back, and the day is already done for Deuce Vaughn. He has earned the rest for the final of the game. Again, just in the run game, in the pass game, he is a factor at five feet five inches tall. Well, and you really have to credit Cody Messi and the offensive coordinator finding unique ways to line him up and get him out on the edges in the passing game to where he's either covered by a linebacker or there's confusion about where he's going to be and there's some 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 coverage confusion with him. So they line him up on the slot. They line him up in the backfield. They run wheel routes. And then you got to stop him in the run game as well. And like you mentioned earlier, he runs so hard in between the tackles. He's not just an outside perimeter guy. He can run between the tackles. He can make you miss in a phone booth. And he can bounce it outside as well. 
I think it's one of the things that speaks to Chris Kleiman and his staff is the fact that you're willing to think outside the box. He's looking for the best football players he can find. And so when the recruiting trail takes you to the, the front doorstep of a guy who's five feet five inches tall, he says, you know what? I've won national championships at the Division One level. When I was at North Dakota State, I know what a winning football player looks like, and this kid is that player. I'm sure there are some coaches in Division One at the FBS levels that, you know, flat out, no. I'm not going to do a 5-5 tailback that just doesn't work in the way we're going to play. But at Kansas State, they're all about winning football games any way possible. And if you can win with this guy, go for it. Well, they, they want to find, just like you saying, they want to find football players, guys that just that want it. And they also have the, the most supreme confidence in themselves that they're going to develop guys as well. K-State, at least in my in my time there, they were fine taking zero stars, one star, and two stars and knowing that they're going to make those guys really great players because they trusted their development. He's one of these guys, and you asked him, when did you know that he could play in the Big 12? He goes, you know, watch about three plays, and you'll understand that. <laughs> it didn't take long at all to convince him that he could play at this level. Jacardier Wright getting some tick here late in the fourth quarter. Another freshman. He's of the redshirt variety from Decatur, Illinois, downstate Illinois. And once again, this is all happening without Skylar Thompson. We're on the second quarterback of the game in Nick Oss, but Will Howard started and will start the remainder of the year if he's healthy. But Skylar Thompson was supposed to be the guy who was calling the shots and making big plays for this offense. Uh, but he is injured and out, but still a big part of what the team is trying to do. Well, yeah, I think that's the impressive thing about the way that K-State has won these games as Skylar Thompson went out. Will Howard had to come in the Texas Tech game and, and replace him. And then he's got to make his first career start against TCU's defense? Are you oh. kidding me? That, that defense gives veteran quarterbacks some trouble, and they got through it. They found a way to win, and that's the that's the the tough out that K State presents. Is that for every rep that Will Howard starts to develop some confidence and get the ball down the field, and they find ways in which makes him successful. That's going to come around. You know that you have to stop Deuce Vaughn. Now you know you have to stop Will Howard, especially after the, the second half perform performance. And then you've got the special teams game to worry about. Then you've got this defense in which they've got a bunch of secondary players that are going to come and run down and hit you. Their front four is going to get after you and hit the quarterback. So it is a complete team, and they showed that today. For a moment, I was surprised that there would be a pass on third down and three for Kansas State, but obviously Chris Kleiman and his staff think that they need probably to get Nick At or Aust available just because he's the true number two for the rest of the season, and he's got to be able to play at a moment's notice. Now the Sunflower Showdown winding down in Manhattan. Kansas State with this win, it'll be 12 in a row, the longest in series history. And it hasn't just been the win. Look at how they have dominated the games in that streak. Close to 500 points and just 141 during that window. Well, and obviously, KU is, is playing a lot of young players right now. Les Miles is trying to put his fingerprint on this program, trying to bring in the right type of guys. And so I would say that you know, looking at these guys, when you when you watch them on film and you watch the way that they compete, you know, this game right here is not truly indicative, I think, some of the talent that they're building there in Lawrence. Still pitching and catching Daniels, finds Grimm. True freshman Luke Grimm, they are thrilled about. He can run and run and run for days. That's his first catch as a college player. Well, it is a good football, too, by, by Jalen Daniels as well. I've, I've been impressed when he when he's on he's really on now there's been some throws that he's thrown in the dirt some bad reads and you know you talk about the pick six I, I, i'm not really necessarily going to put that one on him i'm, I'm going to guess that the coaches told him listen you get this action going one way and we're going to hit this backside screen and it's gonna, it's really going to kind of work like a trick play and you're going to catch him off guard well he executes the play he gets the ball out there it's just that uh justin gardner was was staying home and staying disciplined so Yes, the pick six is on him, but I'm gonna guess it. he was told to make that throw and, and you know, Maybe he's got to see Gardner sitting there But uh, I wouldn't really look at that play and say that's such a negative play by Jalen Daniels 
Highshaw goes out of bounds, stops the clock. Two minutes, 23 seconds remaining. Kansas next week, they'll be home, taking on Iowa State. This loss, though, it's more than a trend. Dating back to the end of last year, this is going to be the ninth straight loss for Kansas. Good break on the ball. Quick pitch and catch. Ezra Naylor has tackled right at the spot of the catch. And we now go under two minutes to play. There's your remaining schedule for Les Miles and his bunch. Well, it certainly does not get any easier for them as well. Iowa State, we talked about their big game against Oklahoma State today. Then they have to, uh, they got to play OU, and then they get that necessary bye week. But the rest of their schedule is still pretty tough. Kwame Lassiter still playing. That is catch number seven for Lassiter. And he has got the ball inside the red zone. Clock is moving. He's still out there competing. We talk about his desire to compete. Followed his, his dad's footsteps to Lawrence, Kansas, and he's one of those guys you never have to worry about taking a rep off. Design quarterback run, and Daniels inside the 10. Should they go that right route, Kansas has all three timeouts remaining. I don't think they're going to settle for a field goal, so they have three plays to get this either the first down or a touchdown. Passes behind Naylor. Well, and those are the plays that we've seen a few times today where he's making the right read. It looks like the receivers are running the right routes. It's just that there's a little, little bit of a mistiming aspect to some of his throws. Just a little bit on the outside shoulder or just a little too far on the inside. All of those things will just get dialed in the more reps they get in practice and the more reps they get in games like this. is in motion it's fourth down and a bunch well you're going to come see him right off the edge on an inside move and these little twists and stunts that kansas state does you have to be prepared for them at all times because they don't blitz a lot they're not going to bring five or six guys a lot they're going to ask their front four to get the pressure and they do it in unique ways just like that twist we saw there line to gain is the two yard line fourth and 14. Back in the end zone. Nobody home. And the ball will go over to K-State on downs with seven seconds remaining in our ball game. So K-State will have the ball. They'll just take a knee, you would imagine. And they will run their record to 4-0 and oh in Big 12 play. And it's the first time that they have been perfect through four conference games since 2014. Well, Coach Kleiman's got his team, like I said, humming and on all phases. You know, we talked about the offense, how it's going to be a little bit slow to go here because you got the injuries and you've got the young freshman at quarterback. But again, they're finding ways to win, and that's a testament to he and his staff to get these guys ready on special teams and defense to make differences in these ball games and win them. Victory formation, and it's yet another win for Kansas State. Their fourth consecutive this season, and their 12th consecutive against Kansas. Now we head back to the studio with Mike Hill for some post-game coverage.